Hey everybody, we're back at it again, I'm building a startup live on YouTube. Uh, last time we met, uh, we had a bunch of really good user interview discussion things, usability test slash discovery sessions, and I'm excited to spend today diving in a little bit and uh, getting all the good stuff out of those and putting it in my backlog and taking notes. It's just so much that I know I want to change from those interviews, so I'm excited to dive in. Um, before I do that, I have a couple other sort of housekeeping things I want to take care of. Though. So let me pull up my notes app here. So generally when I've been on this project, I want to do everything on camera. So important to me that I do everything on camera for this to be like an authentic series. So I have, have you ever heard that Mitch Hedberg joke where he, he, when he thinks of a joke but he doesn't have a pen, he has to just forget it and pretend it wasn't funny? I kind of been doing that when I think of an idea for shuffleboard. So instead of putting the ideas down and doing a bunch of work without you guys, without the camera, I've just been taking some notes here on this document called Shuffleboard Shower Thoughts. So um, these are some things that have come across my path in the past uh, week or so <clears throat> to do with Shuffleboard. And I just want to get them into our asana and take care of them, uh, work on them together on camera, get the sort of the early meeting stuff out of the way today. And then um, we'll get to going through these videos and taking some good notes. There's a lot of video content, um, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get through today, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, first thing on this list, AdWords. This is just a thought that, in general, I fix this thing. Okay, this is a thought in general that we should have. Um, some AdWords to just like experiment with. I mean, eventually, I'm gonna say eventually, you know, maybe we could do some cool tests with AdWords and stuff. Sometimes people, before they ever have an idea, they do AdWords to see if they can get good, you know, paid marketing for it. I think it is a good idea to have a general idea of some good marketing channels that you have before you start a project. Didn't really do that here. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of another one I actually have to put on here. Let's talk about competitors. Uh, okay, so the first thing I want to do is say I want to like run AdWords campaigns. AdWords is the Google um, advertising product, so it means you can I can put my shuffleboard. You know, if you search for workshop tool or something or live collaboration tool, shuffleboard will appear somewhere in those results. Campagna. Um, give this a label of promotions and PR. It's really straight advertising, but um, I'm not sure it's even useful to do, but I want to have it in my backlog. Competitors. This one just came to me just now, obviously, and um, let's say competitive. Oh my God, guys, I can't spell right now, but in general. So Luke, my brother, sent me a link, I think we did on recording a while ago, of something that was sort of like this, but um, I don't think, I, ha I haven't really done this. I haven't actually looked to see if anybody's made this yet for a couple reasons. One, uh, I didn't want to get, you know, a ton of inspiration from other people. Like, I wanted to build the thing that I thought was correct. I didn't want to just see somebody else's thing and say, oh, I need to build that. If I had done that, like knowing, I already know about these like remote, uh, these virtual whiteboard uh, tools and, and I didn't want to end up building a virtual whiteboard if that wasn't what we needed to build. And I, I, I don't think I need to build a virtual whiteboard. That's not what this is. Um, I also just like didn't think it was worth doing on camera and everything I do for this I do on camera. So I didn't want to like do it off camera. I just didn't want to copy anybody. I should probably do this eventually though, look and see who else is making similar things and if there's anything that's really, really good for this. Nobody's mentioned anything to me yet, but there could be a really great product out there that I just haven't thought of and it'll, it'll be a little embarrassing if this whole video recording turns out to be a worse version of something else. Generally though, competition isn't so bad, so I'm not too worried about it. Landing pages. Did I already have one of these? It's not an intuitive icon for me. Yeah, 
Yep, I already have that one. Okay, SEO and Google Search Console. Um, so this is related to um, SEO stuff in general. Basically, Google Search Console is a thing that shows you what people are searching for when they find your website through Google and how maybe you can use that information to make yourself more easily found. Um, SEO in general, search engine optimization, is just a way to <clears throat> do a bunch of different things to help people find you. I've heard that SEO can be really, really great. And uh, I've also heard it's a little bit of a magic, weird science. I think we should definitely do it, but I don't think we're at the point where this product is well known enough and good enough that we're trying to optimize for people coming in. I actually don't care. Like even our next one is a marketing one. I don't really care uh, if people know about me yet. Ugh, is that a bad thing? I'm just trying to get something really great that has a great product market fit. I don't know how to market it until like I've really got this language down. I mean, you can see how much the language is going to change about how we talk about this today based off of our conversations with our users. So I feel like we're a little early to go crazy into marketing land. I'm going to call a thing, for, this is also for later, um, marketing channels. And basically a marketing channel is a way that you get to customers. There's customers over here, there's you here, you gotta talk to them somehow, and there's gotta be some medium through which you communicate that message. It could be Facebook, it could be a podcast, it could be a blog, it could be a billboard, it could be word of mouth, I guess that's a channel. Um, uh, there's a book called Traction by the DuckDuckGo guy. There's two books called Traction, but the Traction Marketing book has like a list of channels and why, like, and what are good for, for what. Basically, like, the idea being there's different channels. Different ones are good for different people and companies and products. And I also heard this podcast and this Justin Jackson guy who's everywhere who says, uh, and podcast number 41, I think he just been through a list of things to do, and one of them was SEO, I remember. But um, I happened to listen to that podcast, and I was like, oh, this would be good for Shuffleboard. So look up a list of marketing channels eventually. It's in our marketing group. Video responses to sales. Oh, I thought it would be cool to um, respond to people who eventually buy, if everybody ever buys. Um, The video. What is that? Boom Boom app or something? Just because this is a very video heavy project, right? And so I thought it might be kind of cool to get a personal welcome. Mission, vision, etc. Okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, lots of companies need to have a clear mission for a couple reasons. You've heard of mission statements, you, you probably don't like them. Uh, Visions, you've, maybe your CEO has a grand vision that you find to be a little bit much or that you find really inspiring. Uh, if it's really inspiring, it's great because having a clear vision about what we want to do for the world is um, basically, you know, it's very motivating to people who might want to work there. People generally tend to like to work for mission or vision driven companies when they have a choice. Um, uh, we have no plans to hire any employees, so it's probably not super pressing there. The other thing is that customers might want to understand what it is that you're doing, and it's also good for product decision making. Like, which of these two potential features should we build? What do we think is the benefit to the world of this thing we're making? And clarifying that, what well, might be useful for us, less useful, I think, than it might be for another company. Glaze stock. Okay. Um, so there's this document called, a document, website called Glaze Stock I came across. Look, it's just like cool, hip, leaf people illustrations. Now we've been talking about just getting some stock illustrations for the website to start. Um, these would be good. Look, there's a whole bunch around teamwork. They're basically shuffleboarding stuff. So I'm probably going to use these. I think I can buy them for like 20 bucks. I'm probably going to use these. 
think that's a cool idea. Uh, homepage illustrations. That's it. I'm gonna add that to my notes there. Order game book and read books. Oh yeah, okay. Um, this is pretty soon. So, um, one of them is this, rapid problem solving with post-it notes. I have a feeling that reading this book, generally reading business books, is not necessarily a great way to spend your time if you're trying to spend a little bit of time here and there to start a company. Um, but, in this case, there's these books that we got from somebody who is very related to what we're doing and they seem they could be very very relevant and so I feel like I might be missing out on some really important concepts about using post-its to run meetings if I don't read these. Was the one that um, Christine mentioned game storming? Yep, that's it. Alright. Whoa, no. Let's get it used because, you know, these books are so much cheaper used. Why not? I don't want it at least good. Are you very good for pretty cheap? Can I get it like new for pretty cheap? No. Alright, let's just get this done. I want to pay a couple extra bucks. Shelfware? I can handle some shelfware. Just taking a note because it showed my address and I don't want that to be on the video. All right, great. So we ordered that book. Read books. Wonderful. Ooh, okay, here's a big one. Email Christina read meeting. So after our usability slash discovery discussion, um, last video, which we're gonna watch today, Christina mentioned that there is a possibility that I could come in and observe them running a meeting. It would be super cool. I really want to do that. But I, I talked to her about it off camera. I didn't want to put it, do it on camera and put pressure on her to ask because uh, these are live video series. So I want to bring you guys in this video series as much as possible to see that if I did go and do my first meeting test with people. So um, uh, I told her we'd figure it out. And I just want to send her a reminder that uh, I'd love to do that.
I don't know what she wants to keep private, but I'm assuming that people generally don't want to expose their entire meeting, you know, on video. So it might be a little strange. can see my most commonly used emojis. That's very intimate. Okay, great. So that is sent. Meaning like, didn't I have a thing? Participants. This one. Lead. Noted. Great. Done. Okay. Last one before we dive into these videos. Laura email. So I was at a little event the other week and uh, I met this couple actually who are running a local tech mag magazine article thing in Ann Arbor called Chronicle. Spelled C-R-O-N. I think that's a internet or a tech joke for cron job maybe? I don't know. So they have all these different articles about what's happening in my little corner of the tech world here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the University of Michigan is. Um, it's like, it's local. These are like people, I, some of these people I know, I've heard of these people. Um, this It's like a small, cool scene. And I mentioned this video series and she mentioned potentially um, being curious about it. So I actually sent this draft email in response to some questions and I realized it's super long, but I want to describe what's going on. And so I just figured I'd really read you guys the piece here about Shuffleboard, what I wrote. It's also a bit about this video series. And the reason I want to share the Shuffleboard bit is because if she does end up including a link to Shuffleboard in some future article, then that would technically be press that I got for the product. And that's part of this whole deal. So I want to include it. So what I said was, so there's format design meetings I've used a million times. Basically, somebody gives a prompt, people write ideas silently on sticky notes, everybody talks about them, people vote, whoever talks about notes, and people vote, how was that? And people vote on their favorite notes or stickers. The format is designed to soak up good ideas, give everybody a voice, make room for debate, end up with the rough group consensus. The problem is it's a pain in the ass, it's a pain to run, and share the results of these meetings, a blizzard of sticky notes, out of focus pictures of whiteboards. And they're impossible for remote teams. So Shuffleboard is a digital version of the same format. It's a web app that collects everybody's feedback in meetings and fosters collaborative real-time discussions. Everybody can contribute ideas and vote on ideas right from their phone and the results are displayed on a screen for everybody to see. I'm still testing private beta version of the product making changes based on feedback, but anyone can sign up for early access at getshuffleboard.com. So I actually wrote that and I was like, oh, that's not some terrible marketing copy. That might be useful for us. In fact, let's make a new doc that just says marketing copy. Did I do this already? I don't think so. Um, we'll just call this Chronicle email. So um, so we'll see what she says. There's a whole lot of wall text. I feel so bad for sending this massive email. Okay, that's done. This is done. Inbox zero. Okay, so we're definitely going to have this marketing copy uh, document up. I know we're going to want to have a new document for Christina. I 
I'm going to take some notes here. <clears throat> we got our backlog here because we're going to add more things to it, I'm sure, as we go. I'm going to call this done. This backlog is going to get all kinds of shuffled up, pun intended. For example, people can see who else is in a meeting. It hasn't really come up yet, but creating custom templates has. So uh, I think we need to demote that already. Did I do any of these tests? Let's, I'll tell you what to do. Let's do follow up. Oh my God, Asana, or Asana, whatever it's called. Oh, it didn't, oh my God, okay, follow up test. Start calling them interviews, huh? They're not tests. YouTube channel videos. Three hours. Let's do this. Hey everybody, another good day for Shuffleboard. Ugh. And Gross. Oh, the subscriber, cool. Um, I'm excited today. Uh, we're voting to start up live on YouTube. Today we have two, count them, two usability tests for potential customers, people who might be talking. Let's see if I. Is there anything I need to take from this initial piece? Because I, I know I did this whole like. All right, shuffleboard. Yeah. Uh, I just was fixing some stuff that was broken for a while. Here we go. two usability tests today, and I'm really excited to have it because it's uh, Becky and Christina, and Becky is especially one of our original. Um, very excited. Um, yeah. If this is Christina, you are who? Okay. I don't really need the size here. Can I shrink it? So I think I wanted, there was, she sort of gives us a broad overview first of what's going on with her uh, <clears throat> design team she works. We didn't really talk about the product much, but they do uh, art of, augmented reality experiences for kids who are uh, in a hospital due to serious illnesses. It's a really cool product. Um, I, let's see how much of this is relevant because I know there's some really good stuff coming up. Um, it's been a lot of time thinking of the problem. And then we create hypotheses about how to, like, because I think people really can't under, wrap their head around augmented reality at first yeah. as a technology. Um, they I very frequently will come back and be like, yeah, we have this problem with patient engagement around this thing, and maybe you could, like, make an app that, you know, I'm like, yeah. and it's very much a mobile app vision, and I'm like, let's not talk about the solution. Right. Let's not, you know. Um, so in the early days, we, we do a lot of concept creation. So we'll spend a bunch of time gathering information about the problem and do concept creation. Um, it might be it might be showing them animated GIFs of things we make, like anything. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's hand-drawn sketches of things and, and do a lot of concept testing just to kind of start ferreting out is it actually going to go towards solving the problem. And then we might narrow it down to a couple of choices um, that seem to be in the right direction or one 
thing. That seems to be the right direction. Um, we'll do storyboarding um, as a design tool, both internally and as a way of communicating things to the people we're working with. Um, and sometimes those people are collaborators of building the products, and so, like hospitals that are going to get us input. And sometimes they're just potential customers that we're like trying to make sure we're not designing in a hole. Um, and then we start building iteratively. We've done um, when we're ferreting out the problem. A lot of times we make things like journey maps. Um, that's a really popular thing. Hospitals love journey maps so much so that in fact we, for some of our webinars, we'll like offer to make them free for hospitals because we get to learn. But we also get to give them a tool that actually starts to encapsulate for them what the patient experience for that. Yeah. Like we think user experience, patient experience, user experience yeah. with the technology, patient experience is all the things around yeah. everything, right? Um, and they hospitals love it. I, and we discovered this early on. I was making some journey maps for like understanding patient, like from the time they were told they need to get an MRI to the time, like till after they have an MRI, what they go in the world and say. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to just map all the encounters with people or technology or spaces or like. Yeah. You know, your doctor tells you this, you get a note from the hospital, you schedule an appointment somewhere where you've never been, and your mom's looking at YouTube videos. You know, like we're trying, we're just trying to understand like all the ways that they engage with technology and human beings around that. And so creating that journey map. Journey map is a great sort of standard uh, UX deliverable where you can just sort of show everything that happens as somebody moves through a process uh, or experience. And wow, well, these are fancy and nice looking. Uh, so, you know, you can zoom in on this, basically see what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, your customer experience, opportunities, etc. Um, and they can be illustrated, they have motions, they have tasks, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so maybe, um, you know, this would be a cool thing to support at some point. Um, didn't, didn't we say somewhere in here like, um, two-dimensional? Yeah. For a journey map. That's what this would do. Templates boards can have slide on two dimensional grid. Because you need to have all the different dimensions of the journey and then the sequential piece here. So you need to be able to have things on a grid. Now, all through the different channels of the experience. This is very interesting for us, and it helped us pinpoint where there were no good solutions, and then confirm that with the customer, and then we showed them the journey, and they're like, what the heck is that? I want one of those. It's all kind of like, <laughs> And then we realized, like, it was a tool for us in terms of really narrowing up the problem, like, well defining the problem for us. It was like, oh, it's also solving problems for them. So we'll do two other tools like that in our design. I feel like I talked around a lot. That's perfect, actually. Okay. That sounds really relevant. What other, you said, are there any other tools before we move on and dig into that that are sort of like during the maps that you use? Um, so we, um, so the journey maps can, I'm going to be using it overly broadly, so we might, sometimes it looks very much like a, a table, like yeah. a cell spreadsheet turned into something fancy. But we're, we watch the channels that they go through and the different encounters they have and kind of, and sometimes we make that more visual, uh, more like a flow chart, um, okay. and certainly we write out user stories around things. Um, uh, the, like, and that's really about testing back with those subject matter experts. Like, this is a story of a kid um, who has cancer and is like back and forth between home and hospital a lot, and we want to talk about what we want to understand what they're from their point of view. It's like, and then we write the story and then we give it back, and we're like, does this sound right? Like, it's just ways of constantly testing our knowledge and assumptions yeah. in the early stages. And those are the most common things. She said user stories. I think the way she's describing it there is more like. I don't know how, what the word is, it's like a journey story, like user story is like an atomic thing that an engineering sprint team builds, or design team builds, but I think what she's talking about is like customer journey, storytelling, I have a blog post about this, but basically like how to, um, um, sorry, basically it's like a narrative, Right, it's not a single single story. Um, how do I get there? Oh, there. Okay. Um, I So I just want to, I mean, a big thing that we're going to do today is just get the copy down. What do, what are the words people use? Problem, definition, you know? and opportunity identification. And let's use those okay. words. We do um, user testing, um, I shouldn't say user testing, uh, experience testing, um, you know, getting people to like work with early, early prototypes and doing observations. Um, we also 
send out surveys and questionnaires and other things. Um, we do different types of concepts, concept testing later on, so we have A-B testing um, for different channels. Um, those are just like tools to use, but in terms of artifacts, most of our artifacts are up front. Um, after, you know, we will get, wait till we get the story right, and we'll wait till the dream up right, and then those are things that, and we have personas that help us, um, but those are probably the persona, the journey maps, um, these are the flow diagrams, and the storyboards are probably the biggest artifacts. Well, those are some of my favorites. Okay. Well, that's exciting. I want to zoom in on, I think that early, the, the area where you would be doing personas and journey maps, maybe storyboards, before you get to like flow diagrams and prototypes. Mm -hmm. That's like the area that I'm most interested in for this, like that early stage where you're just sort of trying to define ideas and high level flows before really designing any user interface at all in the um, what are the tools that you use for journey maps? And those things in general, it sounded like Excel, for sure. I mean, or something like Excel. Google Docs. Like we yeah. use Google Sheets, Sheets and okay. uh, the pre sometimes the presentations, or what's it called? Not PowerPoint, the Google version of PowerPoint. Oh, Google, Google Slides. Slides. Yeah. yeah. So, so Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Docs. <laughs> yeah. Like we literally make stuff, stuff in that. That's great, yeah. <laughs> You know, I came from a, a job that we paid for a lot of tools, and like I loved having those tools. And then when we came to a spot where I had to pay for the tools, I was like, oh, gosh, this is like a crazy expense that I'm like, I don't. I keep saying I'm a big fan of things. Who says that? No, I want to at this point like roll it into the cost of like creating yeah. things. Because um, you're running a startup right now. Yeah. What were those tools that you may consider bringing on, and were too expensive, and how expensive were they? Um. Oh, I don't remember that. Jeez. Um. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's expensive. Yeah. Oh, you know, there was uh, things I'm thinking of are not the early project tools. Uh, the early um. Story tools. Like, um, we had some. I'm gonna screw this up. I think the young did a bunch of stuff around um, mind mapping, but mind like mapping. it was like mind mapping, and but like um, she did mental models, and so there were tools that sprung up around. I remember when Indy's book came out, like around mental models, like Indy Young, I N D I, Indy Young. She's amazing, and I'm, I've seen her talk several times. She's, uh, and you know, she did this thing with sticky notes on the wall and like yes. really like ferreting out the mental models that people have around tasks or features or whatever. Like where do you start in the problem in the discovery process? Um, and then. Of Let's see if we can see the things she's talking about, because that would be cool. Eleven years ago. You know, and, and when I think about like all the tools back in the day when I had like a fully funded department <laughs> that of like from the beginning to the end, like we were paying like thousands of dollars a month total um, to do that. And so this is a lot of it's less sweat equity in the startup. Right. So we're like, nope, we're gonna make it ourselves and it's gonna be kind of crappy. But we're gonna use Google Forms for our questionnaires and like, you know, um, different ways to collect data. I, and a lot of times it's just about what's really, really, really fast for us. Mm. Because we can't spend a lot of time on creating and managing artifacts and then we do end up we found out later that it was really important to share them and so get it into like a branded format. For whoa, 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 okay. Too much good stuff happening. This is great. Okay, so first of all, what she said, she had a fully funded department. She's paying thousands of dollars a month total for the best tools. Say she has five tools and she has $2,000. $400 a month per tool, potentially. That means we could raise our price if we work for those big companies. Then she said it's all about what's really fast for us. For us, that really, really, really fast for us. Mm -hmm. Because we can't spend a lot of time on creating and managing artifacts, and then we do end up being found out later that it was really important to share them. Because we can't spend a lot of time on, what'd you say, creating, managing? Okay. Um, different ways to collect data. I, and a lot of times it's just about what's really, really, really fast for us. Mm -hmm. Because we can't spend a lot of time on creating and managing artifacts, and then we do end up being later that it was really important to share them, and so we get it into like a branded format for us that looks okay. Ooh, okay. And that's a totally other thing. When we do, we found this. Okay, so what she's saying here is, when she makes a thing, when she goes through one of these meetings, and she, I'm sitting in a stool, by the way, so we can do this. When she makes these things in these meetings, 
she gets the the output and she um, wants to share it in a branded format, meaning with her company's logo, presumably. Okay, that's really interesting. Can you tell me about that? Like, what is, this is an cool. example of a fast and slow product, and what is it like to have a branded sharing experience for some part of that? Yeah. So first we would make this up just internally, and it would be haphazard. And then when we realized, like, that first hospital asked me for that journey map, and I was like, I quickly got back to the like, somebody got to fix this, somebody got to check this, and goes, like, it's, you know, like, you start running through all these filters. Not right. just spell check, but like, did we say anything damning? Did we right. say anything judgmental? Did we say, you know, like, really weird things. Right. Like, I would have just been typing in to capture things. So it became a thing of less of, like, sometimes journey maps are almost like note-taking. Yeah. Like, it's like a template for me of the way I think when I'm talking to somebody and gathering data. and. So this is making me think that there's like this world here where you have like interviews, workshops, messy stuff. And then you have this like intermediary and this intermediary can be filled with Google Docs spreadsheets, et cetera, et cetera. There are other like user research tools, et cetera, but what we're saying is Shuffleboard would live here as a tool to capture complex stuff, potentially. And um, so then we fixed it up and sent it to them, and then we kind of tested this concept around like, are people really, they didn't realize like they didn't, have as good a grasp on that whole flow, like that whole, the whole journey for the patient as we assumed they did. And that was really valuable to them. And this actually could become a sales marketing tool for us. Yeah. Like if, if, as part of discovery, what we learn, can we share with others to their benefit and to, to further our knowledge? Like that's yeah. super valuable to everybody involved. And um, so then we sat down and like made a template. Like we started to put better, I don't want to say rules, we made a template that yeah. looked nicer, that was reusable. And then we started to maybe more uh, standardize, I don't know, the way we went, like we made it more efficient. What I'm hearing there is it work, it's beneficial to both her as an organization and their clients. So we've talked about the benefit to their own organization, but we should maybe talk about how nice it'll be for your clients and how impressed they'll be by having shuffleboard meetings to be part of. That'd be a good uh, way to, thing to talk about, don't you think? In terms of like, what are the interview questions we would ask as a framework, we've actually created an interview framework where before we would just spend like an hour or whatever, whatever time we could get from a clinician, yeah. um, that's how long we'd talk to them for. But if we could almost productize it in a way, like we make yeah. it more efficient, we say we only need 20 minutes of your time to get this certain type of information, and then we organize it in a way that's useful for you to, to consume it later and useful for us as well. And um, so we just made this template, made a standard like baseline questions you'd ask. You, of course, you can take a conversation anywhere you want to go, but make sure you get hit these, you know, some points. Um, and when we were, we ran it through a webinar one time at the end of one of our webinars, we offered anybody who was interested in getting a journey map made for any problem you're just facing in the hospital, come, just sign up here on this calendar thing, sign up for a 30 minute time slot, you know, so that people could do on their lunch, right? And, and then people took us up on it. And then they were telling us their problems and we were like so excited to learn and like engage with them at that level. And then they were so excited to have somebody help them articulate it in a meaningful and structured way. And so, but we had to make it efficient. Like we had, yeah. there's only him telling us their problems and we were like so excited to learn and like engage with them at that level and then they were so excited to have somebody help them articulate it in a meaningful and structured way and so but we had to make it efficient like we had, yeah. there's only a handful of us like how do we do all these interviews that's some language that i might want to use and crank it and like engage with them at that level and then they were so excited to have somebody help them articulate it in a meaningful and structured way and so but we had to make it efficient like we had, yeah. there's only a handful of us like how do we do all these interviews and crank out the thing so it was like a form where just yeah. there's a only handful of us like how do we do all these interviews in a meaningful and to learn and like engage with them at that level and then they were so excited to have somebody help them articulate it in a meaningful and structured way and so but we had to make it efficient like we had, yeah. there's a only handful of us like how do we do all these interviews and crank out the thing so it was like a form where just entering um, the notes while they were talking and then it could be spit out into the form the template that we used so it was a google form that you would run yourself on a call mm -hmm. and then you would take the results of that form, usually that sort of like a spreadsheet or something, that spreadsheet could go into a template in what tool? Google Sheets. Google Sheets. <laughs> That's good. I don't use anything with Google Docs and Google Sheets. I'm like, I'm a big fan. I just link all my blog posts from Medium to Google Sheets. I'm like, I'm gonna, two things I use. Yeah. That's all I want. I know. 
It just simplified for us. That's those are tools we use every day in making all our stuff. Yeah. Um, it's easy to spit out their performance. They're shareable. It's easy to like put in a drive folder and let them access it, and, mm -hmm. or just send it to them in an email uh, to create these centralized places where if they want to share with other team members, like go take a look. Um, so she's describing why it's beneficial to have them in Google Sheets. These are the same benefits about why it'll be better to use Shuffleboard rather than a whiteboard. So I want to just use what she's saying right here. If you want to edit it, um, it's easy to spit out their performance that are shareable. It's easy to like, put it in a drive folder and let them access it and, or just send it to them an email um, to create decentralized. So I'm thinking like compared to a whiteboard or especially a virtual whiteboard shuffleboard organizes data so you can use it that's the purpose of this we're adding this extra structure thing to this whole world This is a good idea. Areas, like yeah. I think the value proposition of the US artifact hasn't been taken far enough um, yeah. in like for in-house totally. teams even. I have a ton of questions about this. Oh. One of them is, you said there's something about brand. Like, when you share this, do you make it a spellbound branded thing? Do you make it branded for them? How much of this is an artifact that's tied to a brand, and how is that, like, yeah. how does it literally look at the thing? Yeah. So when first we're doing, because when first doing it, it was definitely primarily spellbound branded. And then we made a switch, um, where our logo existed, but it was suddenly in the bottom right corner, you know, so much smaller than it was. It was, like, the last thing you would look at on the page. Um, and there, 
Now, we have to be careful, too. We don't put their logos in there, unless they tell us to put their logos in there. But we certainly left room if, when we gave them the, say, cell file, they wanted to, like, insert it themselves. But we never delivered that. But we would, like, put their hospital name in big letters across the top, and the team name, like, and, you know, this was, you know, journey map for patients, uh, you know, MRI patients at yeah. hospital name, um, you know, for, and then subtitle, like, the, the team, like, not the individual, but, like, the individual unit or department. Um, so that, and those things matter in hospitals, like very hierarchical, very structured, and so um, that matters to the team member. But it also, like when they were spreading, uh, spreading it on, passing it on to, you know, maybe they just send it to their supervisor, and their supervisor will send it to the director of their unit, the director, and somehow it gets up to somebody, and like all along that chain, it matters yeah. you know, what, um, how that form, like how yeah. the artifact is branded. Um, they're more likely to engage with it beyond matter if it was not our brand. So your brand matters. The who did it and what department they are in and what the journey or the title or something for the thing. I don't know. Makes sense. Um, what is it like when one of those higher ups gets this? Like, what experience do you think you want them to have when they receive one of these reports that might be coming not through the person you collaborated with to create the report? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think the result, hope for an aha moment. Like, yeah. like, oh, could be good, could be bad. Sometimes it's about inspiring them to, you know, hopefully be inspired about our product, but inspiring them just to even start to move toward a solution, even if they're not going with us. Um, right way, like to acknowledge. I think there's a lot of non, like it's very difficult to acknowledge real issues because then that means they start to solve them. And if, like, frankly, when you're dealing with places that it's life or death in some areas, in some areas it's maybe not, then you yeah. can understand why the priority system is the way it is. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes you need these aha moments in when it's like, we're not actually going to save a life. What we're going to do is like reduce trauma in the patient experience, increase yeah. cooperation, increase your throughput, reduce wait times for families. Like, lots and lots of value, but did we reduce the number of deaths of can due to cancer? No. Yeah. So I can see why this is the area where you would focus most readily on, but this area matters too, and sometimes they need an aha moment to be like, yeah. This is interesting. I think she's saying that there's this element that we want to talk about where we're not just, this isn't about shipping software for us, for example, if we were to take this analogy. It's about showing that there's a better way to work a better way to collaborate, inspiring people to say, hey, listen, you can ask other people, you can have great communication in your in your organization, you know? Um, there's a few things we're gonna copy over from this, but like, that's important. Okay. Yeah. And it's not so hard to solve it. And it's because sometimes these things can feel nebulous. Yeah. And it's hard to get a grip. So when you get, I want that moment where they're like, it crystallizes the problem succinctly. Yeah. And like, I did work in hospital for a while as a UX person. And what I learned very quickly is about economy of words. Like when things are measured in seconds and milliseconds and like breaths, like these very discrete and tiny moments of time, you don't send like the emails. You don't hold meetings. Like meetings can literally be called for eight, meeting times, eight minute time slots. Wow. Like you, it is economy of words. So when you're trying to communicate something, <laughs> you try to communicate something, you have to figure out the most succinct way to get it across yeah. that day. It's almost like producing constant aha moments, like a breakthrough, an insight, something that quickly translates into action. And if that's the way they operate as clinicians and administrators of clinicians, then that's the way artifacts need to speak to them. And I feel like UX artifacts are completely, they're built for that. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, in your past life, when you were doing other work when you weren't doing this project, and you were doing similar kinds of work, um, first of all, did you have any other formats or tools that you didn't use? Like you mentioned you, had, you were running a team where you had other, these other tools that you would use to run user experience mm -hmm. artifacts. And again, specifically in this like early discovery, very early definition phase. Mm -hmm. um, first, first question around that is like, what, are the, what other, did you use any other tools that you really liked or formats that you really liked? Like you mentioned something like post-its, that might have been like affinity diagram. Yeah, we, I mean, affinity diagram is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things yeah. to do of all time. We do it internally here all the time. For oh, really? very, like business processing, everything. Um, I'm surprised there's one on the wall there right now. Um, Affinity diagramming. Um, I mean, there were, I mean, built things like uh, <laughs> I mean, these magnetic sheets that you print, out, you print out stuff, and I built out like raw pieces of interfaces and like cut them up and let people on whiteboards create like That's cool. interfaces. And then yeah. like, I, what I would do is I would say, here's, I would have someone come in with a blank thing and be like, here's the problem, and give them the problem. And they're like, go ahead and solve it. And I leave the room, and then they would design their interface, and I take a picture of it, and then I would do that with a bunch of people, a team from like different angles, right? Like, how would the salesperson solve it? And then we use those, we would go through and look at all the similarities and differences, and then and sometimes we would do it with customers, or sometimes we would do it with end users. Like This is a very like participatory design approach, where you're having customers design, or somebody else design the product with you. I think it's a really cool approach. I don't think it's feasible to do in Shuffleboard. 
like, when you do it with different groups, it feels different, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm very much like into almost like arts and crafts kind of like, yeah. because sometimes when you, it's hard to get typical interviewing or ethnographic studies are almost impossible to use in hospital environment. You're not allowed to just go in and serve right. and make insights about behavior. Yeah. It's like protected, right? Yeah. Um, privacy issues, all kinds of stuff. And then we were just like, you no know, difficulty of interviewing the subject matter expert. Well, to me, like, the chief of pediatric cardiology is like the epitome of like the worst possible interviews that it, because they know so much, but the knowledge is so deep and in some cases also so broad that you across like a subject that and, and then it's just like and they never have you would need to spend so much time with them yeah. that they can't possibly so you yeah. have to sign like i used to do this arts and craftsy vibe though that she was mentioning before is, is making me think that that should really be a part of our brand and our visual design. I like this idea of making shuffleboard not feel locked down. I think that what we want to show is not shuffleboard is not like Airtable. We've heard of Airtable. It's like a Google Sheets replacement that's more like a database. We don't want shuffleboard to be that. We want shuffleboard to be a place that's like a place to explore and craft and just move things around. It's like, you know, this vibe with the post-its. It's, it's a post-it-y replacement. It's not a thing for like, um, you know, um, organizing all your data in a database. It's a it's a better way to have these loose studio-like um, uh, interactions and this, the craftsy vibe is in line with that. When I used to create tools for college students, like I was in coffee shops and get out and just like watch, observe, and then find people to like talk to me. I'll buy your coffee to tell me a little bit more about why you're doing that. Like I would start like with behavior and understanding motivations and therefore translate that into expectations. And um, I can't do that anymore. Um, when we do get to go and observe, it's a very controlled situation. We don't get freedom to do what we want. We have been allowed to go in, and I remember the first time we ever went into a hospital, we were trying to just even decide the delivery via headset, is it going to be a mobile device? Can we do some A-B testing with something we built with users just to determine the direction for building the product? And it, eventually, it determined that we were going to start with mobile um, because the experiences we had, but like that was extremely controlled. And it wasn't like I couldn't follow. <laughs> you know, the way I used to, like, oh, that's interesting. Let me ask you more about this. Like, it was really fine that we were allowed to talk to patients about. Script. Yeah. Uh, it's like, <laughs> terrible. But, it's my script. Right. It's it's a guideline. You want to bring in a guideline. Yeah. You just make points I want to hit, or like, yeah. and then go with it. Yeah. And it was. Well, what happened there? I want to There's something really good. Or, like, yeah. And then go with it. shows just to like listen to other sales pitches and hear how the, like those clinicians or administrators respond to those sales pitches. What are the questions they ask? Like I'm doing like an ethnographic yeah. study like in the field just because I'm like trying to build out our own sales pipeline or process and you know. So this is like this quote in the middle of this stuff that I didn't think was as relevant but she says it's a guide on these the main points I want to hit and go with it. I think she's speaking to the flexibility that you need in the live experience of managing these interactions when you have when you go to somebody with a creative open-ended conversation you need to um, you need to be able to react and change the presentation on the go live it's not like a speech and and she tried to edit the title of one of these things live so I think that's really important this should be editable live that's really interesting Not, had not thought of that. Anticipate the issues that we're going to have. You mentioned doing affinity diagrams with your team also. Mm -hmm. So that's like another instance of the UX tool that you're using in a non-pure product development. That's why I'm so excited because anybody who else might be doing this, this stuff, they're not going to go through and talk to all these users. Like, if you talk to users, they just tell you what they want and you build it. Oh, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. right? It's like what so simple, you know? You know? That for it's like not easy. Pure affinity diagram, what are those sessions like? I did one that wasn't a huge success recently. It was the most recent one. So we have to redo some of the infrastructure of our platform. We want to redo our interface and a few other things. Um, so I was like, okay, I want everybody to jot down all the features that we have on the, web, on the platform now. And then I want you to jot down all the ones that are in the process of being built on this color. Mm -hmm. And then on this color, I want you to jot down all the ones that we talked about and planned about having started work on yet. And then I, 
put, we put those up and we did a couple different sorts to say, like as an activity to say, how would things be organized either on the back end, um, structurally, or on the front end to the user, like through that mobile app interface, like how would they anticipate. And we, but haven't started work on yet. And then on this color, I want you to jot down now. And then I want you to jot down all the ones that are in the process of being built on this color. On this color. And then on the so I was like, okay, I want everybody to jot down all the features that we have on the web, on the platform now. And then I want you to jot down all the ones that are in the process of being built on this color. And then on this color, I want you to jot down all the ones that we've talked about and planned, but haven't started work on yet. And then I put, we put those up and we did a couple different sorts to say, like as an activity to say, how would things be organized either on the back end, um, structurally, or on the front end to the user, like through that mobile app interface, like how would they anticipate. And we put different lenses on it, like I would say, okay, now let's sort with the mind to um, um, efficiency, um, no responsiveness, Performance, like right. it has, you know, like let's put a, this, this filter on it, or let's put a filter on it. Um, in terms of accessibility, let's put a filter on it. And, um, and so we went through the activity a couple times and did some sorts, and we started to see some patterns where certain things were always kind of lumped together. Um, and then we, so certainly when we do our. So maybe there's, we need to make it so that you can color post-its by the person who made them, or you can color them by some category <clears throat> that people put them in. Um, to do here is different sorts. Our planning for our backlog, I, uh, I guess this is another tool, but it leads to affinity, affinity or it often starts with affinity diagram. Um, quadrant analysis of like um, for like features for us like easy to build, hard to build, easy to use on the other end, or hard to use. Um, performance. That's a little bit fuzzy, but if you remember the org, you can edit, you know, whatever. What happened? You should trust the people you're working with. I, what I would do is I would say, here's, I would have someone come in with a blank thing and be like, here's the problem. <laughs> the project, and you were doing similar kinds of work. Like you mentioned, it's something like post its that might have been like I, what I would do is I like customers or sometimes we can do it with and you studies are almost impossible to use in hospital learning. Right? You're not allowed to just go in and serve right. and make insights. So like it's like our business development process. <laughs> because I'm like trying to build out our own sales pipeline. I did one that wasn't a huge success recently, it was the most recent one. So we have to redo some name structure of our platform. We want to redo our interface and a few other things. Um, so I was like, okay, I want everybody to jot down all the features that we have on the web on the platform now. And then I want you to jot down all the ones that are in the process of being built on this color. On this color. And then on this color, I want you to jot down all the ones that we've talked about and planned, but haven't started work on yet. And then uh, we put those up, and we did a couple different sorts to say, like as an activity to say, how would things be organized either on the back end, um, structurally, or on the front end to the user, like through that mobile app interface, like how they anticipate. And we put different lenses on it, like I would say, okay, now let's sort with the mind to um, um, efficiency, um, no responsiveness. Performance, like right. it has, you know, like let's put a this, this filter on it, or let's put a filter on it. Um, in terms of accessibility, let's put a filter on it. And, um, and so we went through the activity a couple times and did some sorts, and we started to see some patterns where certain things were always kind of lumped together. Um, and then we, so certainly when we do our planning for our backlog, I, uh, I guess this is another tool, but it leads to affinity, affinity diagram, or it often starts with affinity diagram. Um, quadrant analysis of like um, for like features for us, like easy to build, hard to build, easy to use on the other end, or hard to use. Um, performance or not, you know, like we would just do different ones, and we might take all the features that we had done the infinity diagram. Like, okay, these seem to lump together, seem to be the core things, and let's now map them out in our quadrant analysis, and actually, we will assign points to the quadrants, and then assign points to the cards, and then add it up over time, and be like, these, these are the critical things that we have to map together. And that, like, this is the ones that are done, these are the ones in progress, and these are the ones that haven't yet started. But look at the popping up over here. And so sometimes it's a priority activity, sometimes it's a thinking, like a problem solving. Like, I really don't know how to read the infrastructure. Yeah. Piece. I don't know this way or this way. It could be an engineering problem, it could be an inner, like a design problem, it could be multiple layers of problem that we're trying to solve with that activity. Um, we've done it with goals, certainly, setting goals for the team, um, or deciding what to do next, and that could be either engineering or sales or marketing, like, um, keep the campaign going, what to do next, and we have a bunch of ideas for doing stuff, and how do we kind of, when people, ideas from come from different areas and different people, how do we kind of see the commonalities between yeah. them or the differences, yeah. and like have meaningful conversations about those things. 
Whoa! This is gold. Sometimes it, that's what it was. This is our whole value prop. We've done goals, certainly. Set goals for the team. Um, we're deciding what to do next, and that could be either engineering or sales or marketing. Like, um, campaign. We have a bunch of ideas. We're doing stuff, and how do we kind of when people ideas from different areas and different people, how do we kind of see the commonalities between them or the differences? Yeah. And have meaningful conversations about those things in a way that's gonna like, help us make decisions about things. That's very related to what we're, what we're thinking about. Um, what is the biggest problem you have when running meetings like that? Or some of the biggest problems? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, this is, the, this is the stuff here. That's very related to what we're doing. We have a bunch of ideas for doing stuff, and how do we kind of, when people, ideas from different areas and different people, how do we kind of see the commonalities between them yeah. or the differences, yeah. and have meaningful conversations about those things in a way that's going to help us make decisions about things. That's very related to what we're thinking about. Um, what is the biggest problem you have when running meetings like that, or some of the biggest related to what we're thinking about? Different areas and different people, how do we kind of see the commonalities between yeah. them or the differences? Yeah. have meaningful conversations about those things in a way that's going to help us make decisions about things. That's very related to what we're thinking about. Um, what is the biggest problem you have when running meetings like that? Or some of the biggest problems? Mm -hmm. Help us make decisions about things. That's very related to what we're thinking about. Um, what is the biggest problem you have when running meetings like that? Or some of the biggest problems? Mm -hmm. We are salty. I know there's all kinds of dangers with big teams or group think and there's other pitfalls. We're not a company that has departments that okay, have- Okay guys, hold up. Listen to this quote. We have a bunch of ideas for doing stuff. When different ideas come from different areas and different people, how do we see the commonalities and differences and have meaningful conversations about those things that'll help us make decisions about business? Boom! That's what we're doing. That is the problem we're trying to solve. So that's gonna go on the homepage. Basically that, exactly. A bunch of ideas for doing stuff. Very cool. It's you're like panning. You're panning for gold in, when you're doing this stuff. You're panning for, for each department. Gold. Therefore, there's multiple viewpoints representing each department. Um, that can sometimes be. Do. But you know what I mean, like mitigate it or cancel each other out or reinforce each other. We don't, we can't see bigger patterns of that. We have a bunch of individuals that operate in different capacities that come and then those individual biases or individual communication styles or individual, so it doesn't become an identity of a group like marketing. Right, it's the identity of the individual. Bob or Sue or yes, something. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so that's one problem that we're, that's why I think doing activities like um, affinity diagramming in a way like forcing people to see things through different lenses or to like see things in a, a, like a unique way, doing different um, activities of grouping is useful. Um, and then certainly the quantum analysis, like for us giving criteria, because sometimes the engineering criteria is not going to be the same as the marketing criteria, it's like for us different um, activities of grouping is useful. Um, and then certainly the quantum analysis, like for us giving criteria, because sometimes the engineering criteria is not going to be the same as the marketing criteria, duh, like that's obvious, but then sometimes the personalities themselves put a skew on it that, you know, might you know, further propagate. Thing. So I don't know what you meant by that. Um, I think doing running these activities where we can see from different viewpoints very often, or where we can focus very much on a single viewpoint, which that it might be either through personas like this child life specialist role that we're selling into, or this end user who has this condition. Like, um, so there's times where we want to like force people to stand at an angle that they're not used to and see from like, okay, go see from Rachel's perspective, go see from my perspective, and then there's times where we want to force all of us to stand together and look through one lens of the stakeholder or the administrator or the like persona. The other problem is that um, I feel like as an extroverted UX person that has done a lot of things, I um, two game books that I used to like play, use all the time. Game Storming was one, and there was another one. I don't even have the bookshelf over there. It might have one bookshelf. But, Those um, are my two. They play games with people to get illicit problem activities. Like, yeah. I used to do all these things. And so I turn it on my staff. <laughs> I'm also a very dominant personality. And so, and so I turn it on like play games with people to get illicit problem activities. Like yeah. I used to do all these things. And so I turn it on my staff. <laughs> I'm also a very dominant personality. And so I run the risk all the time. Like you, you said about the danger of these meetings. Like even when I'm running affinity diagramming, I'm like, oh, I can see the way it can be done 15 minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 And I'm like, I need to stop. 
and it's hard when it's a small team because like I am, I represent a whole area that nobody else represents. So I, yeah. the rule is like the US person should not participate in a small team because okay. I show you meetings. Like even when I'm running affinity diagramming, I'm like, oh, I can see. So, uh, and so I turn it on my staff. <laughs> I'm also a very dominant personality, and so I run the risk all the time, like you, you said about the danger of these meetings, like even when I'm running affinity diagramming, I'm like, oh, I can see the way it can be done. And I'm like, okay, okay. show you. Show you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I need to stop. And it's hard when it's a small team, because like I am, I represent a whole area that nobody else represents, so I, yeah. the rule is like the US person should not participate. <coughs> so I am that US person, but then I am a role that's supposed to participate. <coughs> and yeah. I realized because of, I started the company and the role I have, and because of who I am, just as a person, this creates a whole world of problems. Yeah. Um, I'm like, and that's the only downfall, frankly, I've seen is being both the UX person and CEO. Because mm -hmm. so many others, like 99.99% of the time, I'm like, thank God, I was a UX person and I have like this toolkit. Um, but that's there's that one time where I'm like, damn it, why can't somebody else this room right now be the UX person? <laughs> I need to be, so I need someone to like manage me in this. <laughs> that's so fascinating. Yeah. What would your, I mean, if you could snap your fingers and it would be another, would it just be another person who, another you that could just come in and run it? What would be your, if in your dream world, what would be your ideal situation? This room right now be the UX person. I've seen as being both the UX person. It's a whole world of problems. They play games with people to get illicit problem activities. Like yeah. I used to do all these things. And so I turn it on my staff. <laughs> I'm also a very dominant personality. And so I run the risk all the time. Like you said about the dangers in these meetings. Like even when I'm running affinity diagramming, I'm like, oh, I can see the way it could be done. And I'm like, show you. Show you. <laughs> what did you do? And I'm like, I need to stop. And it's hard when it's a small team because like I am, I represent a whole area that's yeah. diagramming. I'm like, oh, I can see the way it could be done. And I'm like, show you. Show you. What did you do? And I'm like, I need to stop. And it's hard when it's a small team because like I am, I represent a whole area that nobody else represents. So I, yeah. the rule is like the US person should not participate. So I am that US person, but then I am a role that's supposed to participate. And yeah. I realized because of, I started the company and the role I have, and because of who I am just as a person, this creates a whole world of problems. Yeah. Um, I'm like, and that's the only downfall, frankly, I've seen as being both UX person and CEO. Because mm -hmm. so many other, like 99.99% of the time, I'm like, thank God, I was a UX person and I have like this toolkit. Um, but that's there that one time where I'm like, damn it, why couldn't somebody else in this room right now be the UX person? <laughs> I need to be, so I need someone to like manage me in this. <laughs> that's so fascinating. What would your, I mean, if you could snap your fingers and it would be another, would it just be another person who, another you that could just come in and run it? What would be your, if in your dream world, what would be your ideal situation for that specific problem? Hmm. If, um, my universe is rupturing, <laughs> Sam. Um, unicorns and rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the world, but I know it. No, um, I am really torn between that's what I get to do all day and somebody else comes in and runs the company, right? right? Right. And I run the company and I have somebody else who can, like, manage, you know, like, right. say, I'm a stakeholder in that whole process of, yeah. like, um, creation around user experience. Like, um, both are very desirable roles to me. I think what I often worry about is like I'm falling into a comfort role because I came from yeah. a career user experience and that, that's just the, the comfy safe box that's easy to go back into. Um, and it's also just fun. Like that's the reason I had a career. It was fun and, and like you're always learning and creating new insights and creating new knowledge and sharing that. Knowledge. And it, I just love that. Um, so I think, uh, but where I am now, I think, you know, having someone to come in and do it, like I think it would probably benefit me hugely to be the subject. It, it lets me while. What if you could admit, what if you could snap your fingers and have any tool to help you with this? Instead of a person, you just, you're, you know, you're still the person you are, but you have anything that could help you untangle this problem of you want to jump in, you want to sort of figure this out. Is there any structure that you think would be really helpful to you to have? I'm just curious if you can say no like this. This may be wrong, off topic, or weird. Um, what I'm struggling with now is in terms of user experience. I'm in reality, I mean, right now we deliver it through a mobile app. So there is an interface. Technically. I think she's talking about uh, AR metrics, which I think are not super relevant. The canvas for in us. which it's placed is infinite. It's the world, right. at least infinite in a human size, right? But like things like that I want, whether it's observational data collection or like um, like standard analytics stuff, can you can use that in computation behavior. Um, with augmented reality, the possibility of observing it, but when you start getting into heavy, that maybe relative to other digital objects and relative to their behavior, I want to be able to measure some of that. Um, in a little that meeting where you were talking about the affinity diagram and you're the CEO, like, I'm really interested in the, the specific moment, this is, you'll see what Hawaii is relevant in a minute, when you're having like a, a session with your team and you're talking about something, trying to make a decision. Are there any tools that you could use? Because that probably won't be able to be too much too much useful in terms of analytics for right. VR, but what, what, if you have a perfect tool for managing the communication of your team, um, is there anything that comes to mind if not, that's totally fine? Like, what would be the ideal situation besides having a user experience come first and run a meeting with your CEO? I'm not going to describe that tool because I don't know what that tool is. I'm going to just, so, 
I think there's something around empathy building. So when I talk about lenses or filters or stuff like that, like that's often the whole purpose of that is to build empathy in situations to help come together to solve a problem. Um, and so I think there are tools around empathy building. Uh, so of course, I immediately go to say, can we use 3D technology to build empathy in a situation where we can um, better understand the user journey, better understand that the person, the decision maker's process of like purchasing technology in a hospital, like um, where we could actually situationally put ourselves into it. Um, and healthcare is such a black box, like, but for the team itself, like to situationally put themselves into it. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and then have meaningful discussions about how personal experiences shape our insights or you know our reactions to those things. Um, so I think there's like something around empathy building is what I'm going to categorize it at the beginning. Yeah. Because that is all, like, whether it's affinity, diagramming, or cause analysis, all those are activities in alignment, right? Like, yeah. if we're trying to Ooh. normalize all the biases, all the, like, random weirdness that come from... Hold up, okay. So what she said there, her goal is building empathy for her team. To better understand users, decision makers, in hospitals, for example, put, teams in the, put the team in the situation, have meaningful discussions about how our personal... Um, experiences shape our insights. I'm gonna put a big how might we on that. How do we do that? You know what it reminds me of? One, hold up, let me show you. I got a book somewhere. Ah, oh, shit. Where is that book that I just bought? Turn my camera. Uh, all right, it doesn't matter. The book is about improv. And um, I just talked to somebody else who did an offsite with their team where they did an improv performance. So what you're trying to do in these creative moments is uh, like, like improv is the same. You're putting yourself in a situation. Who, you are X person now. You have to play a character. It could be your user, it could be whatever. You have to roll with that situation and try to understand and problem solve as that other person to get things done and to build awesome stuff. And, and what if this was a tool that could help create that? So like idea could be, first of all, discussion, ability to put in discussion points in meetings, ability to um, What else would be useful for that? There was something else I just thought of. Like this is like basically text slides in meetings. There was another one. Discussion points in meetings, ability to get. Like I, I was thinking, how would you run Oh, like um, sharing, this is it, like just sharing an improv workshop. I mean, there's another thing she set up here, which is she was running one that wasn't a huge success. A success. So for me, I'm saying there's an opportunity to find exercises that make a difference. What if you could tell people, listen, this is going to have all the benefits, here's the features. These conversations are important because they make room for people when there's you know not enough, when the voice is like overwhelming. Um, if you're an outgoing personality, give your team place to make room. Find exercises, unlike the one that isn't a huge success, that you know are gonna work, that people have rated and loved. Like be able to share templates and use templates from really expert people. Use consultants who wanna put templates on here so that you can use those templates and hire people based off those templates um, to run these exercises for you. Um, and that way you know that when you run one of these things, it's all built in. It's like a package that comes to you. For example, improv, you could have like discussion points and stuff that you just get the workshop off of Shuffleboard. You run the workshop, it has the discussion points built in. That's a cool idea. So it's like a, a workshop marketplace or something, you know? That could be cool. Human beings of different walks of life. And that could be a growth channel too, right? Because what that does is it means that people who want to run these things can push their stuff there and get attention from other people. And that would that could create a viral loop. That's like a way to build virality into a product, potentially. Life. 
having different life experiences coming together on one point, right? Yeah. Uh, or a decision or something. So we're trying to normalize and we're trying to align. Um, and I think that is, empathy is a way to eliminate a lot of noise in those. And so if you have tools that build empathy. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Because I think all the things when we do we create personas, like that's trying to build empathy, right? Yeah. When you were doing a journey map, that's all about empathy. Like all the artifacts we use are about empathy. So. Um, this is not a um, um, super relevant shuffleboard. She just said, the purpose of empathy is to eliminate noise, and that's just like so cool. I think that's just an awesome UX insight. I haven't heard it said that way before. We're working with the best people. That's um, cool. We focused on, I wouldn't say that all artifacts are That's an assumption that all UX artifacts are based on empathy, but the ones that we use are, and um, the common threads between those things at the beginning in terms of communicating or providing activities for people that can lead you to empathy. Mm. And then, I think there is like something, and we use a lot of different tools now, but around capturing um, ideas. What do you use? Uh, yes. <laughs> What's the only thing we do? Okay, so uh, sticky notes, Trello, Google Docs, um, all the cheapo ways that we do it. Um, we can literally capture ideas through little videos on our phones. Um, that's cool. And how do you share that? We share through Slack, through Google Drive, um, mostly Slack. And it can be attached to things like a Trello card or like yeah. we have Jira as well. But we try different tools, some stick, some don't. Um, Slack is a tool that's really stuck. And so we've actually started building little plugins for Slack. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so like when we want to grant access to a new user, we actually just type in the Slack bar. And it awesome. literally looks up to our back end, creates permissions, spits <laughs> back what we actually did to check to make sure. So it's like we're creating these little Slack um, like scripts. Sticky notes, Trello, Google Docs, etc. All the cheapo ways we do it. Maybe there's an opportunity to say shuffleboard is not a cheapo way. This is for like legit people who are like doing great workshops and awesome, running awesome teams. Great leaders run great meetings with their great and get ideas from great teams. Ooh, that's kind of a cool thing to say. Run great meetings. that bring out the best in their teams. Um, second, they capture video on their phones. This is so important. Not only are we not seeing, I had an initial belief that we wouldn't be able to use phones in these meetings would be distraction, but people are using them already and liking it. And there's opportunity there. Turn it into this, oh, but it's, I feel like that's a bit of like building Frankenstein's monster. Like, we're, we are Frankensteining it together. Like, yeah. is that really the tool we should be managing permission off and off? And we're like, what? Mm, let's just it's roll back on that one. But the main line is something. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. Like, so I think when we look at the different ways that we come up with ideas, we draw and take a picture and post it on Slack. Yeah. And like, we do or take a little video. Like, the engineers are really famous for like running this experimental thing and then just doing it and like showing how it works and like showing a proof of concept and posting a little like 30 second video up. And um, so, like, you know, it's like, Mini artifact create bigger like idea. What would you? How the ways we can create um, or not create? Capture an idea yeah. and then store it. And then the rest, like it's like those ideas have to be analyzed slash prioritized. Like some activities to take it to like which ones do we move on? And Here's an idea. Maybe instead of having templates that you run that you can edit, you can just start a new one right off the bat and just like new slide or wrap it up. You know. Like you can just make a new thing, throw it up there and say, hey, we're just gonna start a new one. It's just gonna be empty. We hit start. There's a blank spot for a question. Anybody can start posting immediately. We can add the question later. You can make a new slide right from there. You can do whatever. Like you can do it as you go. That'd be cool. I got some energy to do this. Which one's dumb. And then once you decide to move on an idea, then it goes through this whole evolution. And like, and that's all part of the discovery process. Because an idea can come from anywhere. It could be sent to us from a customer. It could come internally from a team. And yeah. all of them have to be vetted. I don't know. Uh, um, as part of the discovery process, is this actually solving a problem? Like, is this problem? How prevalent is this problem? We say this is a problem, and we hear that's a problem. But like, really, in the market, are there other tools that solve it? And what's good or bad about those tools? Or if there's no tools to solve it, the problem we're solving, right? Yeah. Um, so we have to go through that. And then once we determine it is, do we really understand the problem and why yeah. it's happening? And then when then we sit down and design for the solution. But the idea capture and then the activities that go around vetting ideas um, are also an issue because it's all over the place. So there's a process of capturing things, getting them onto the record somewhere, 
but then the actual process of managing that capture. Trello is like a Kanban productivity tool. There's also Slack, which is very chronological, right, to the extreme. And it's something there's maybe a little bit of like clarity around how you take a bunch of ideas mm -hmm. and turn them into like a plan or a decision mm -hmm. or you know validated insight mm -hmm. thing that kind of goes into doing something else. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. Um, this has been great conversation. I have a couple small questions that I want to do a couple quickly, and hopefully we still have time to go a little bit over. That's okay. And um, dive into something that we've actually made. But this is far more important than these ability tests. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also because these ability tests might break because it's just a new code this morning. We'll see. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, you mentioned games. It's yeah. really interesting. What, could you give me a couple of examples of the other games that you've used or you guys have used that have been useful for this kind of, this is the realm that I'm really interested in, by the way, this sort of group coming together, having mm -hmm. ideas, clumping them, sorting them. I love we talked about filtering things, that was really interesting, and then sharing them. Mm -hmm. What are the games that you've used and what are the, like, come back to the game. Okay. Um, so certain types, or like purposes behind games, and sometimes sometimes you'll see individual techniques like a video diagram and just bleeding into a part of the game. Um, so like there's something about productivity, right? There's games around productivity. Can you just get people to move through it, to like move something forward, yeah. right? Um, get closer to a decision or make a decision or whatever. Um, and then there's I yeah, I would call it empathy building um, or alignment um, games. And so um, so for example. Um, Taking techniques like brainstorming, which is everyone seems to get when you say that word, um, but putting different activities like so. Let's this is the problem we're trying to solve. Let's brainstorm some ideas that we have, okay? And then stop. Let's brainstorm the worst ideas you can think of to do for this. Then stop. Let's you know um, reverse brainstorm. Like you know, like take it in different directions. Um, uh, like let's pick this one that we think is the worst idea, and then take it to another activity. There's like some like the nine questions game. You know, uh, ask why nine times or whatever. Right, right, right. Um, so then you, you start building on, and then. Um, Too much good stuff here. Just bleeding into a part of the game. Um, so, like, there's something about productivity, right? There's games around productivity. Can you just get people to move through an activity, like, move something forward, yeah. right? Um, get closer to a decision or make a decision or whatever. Um, and then there's, I, again, I don't know what call it empathy building uh, or alignment um, games. And so, um, so for example, um, taking techniques like brainstorming which is, everyone seems to get when you say that word, um, but putting different activities like... By the way, UX or inside, no. When she says brainstorming, everybody seems to get it when you say that word. She's actually throwing shade on brainstorming because what she's saying is, I think, brainstorming is like a little bit not... People aren't in love with it. We t I've talked about brainstorming in this thing, but I don't... It is brainstorming, but it's also not because we think there's something better and there's, there's a sense that there's something wrong with brainstorming in the industry and that we want to do better. So let's, this is the problem we're trying to solve. Let's brainstorm some ideas that we have, okay? And then stop. Let's brainstorm the worst ideas you can think of to do for this. Then stop. Let's, you know, um, reverse brainstorm. Like, you know, like, take it you can think of to do for this. Then stop. Let's, you know, um, reverse brainstorm. Like, you know, like, take it in different directions. Um, uh, oh, brainstorm some ideas that we have, okay? And then stop. Let's brainstorm the worst ideas you can think of to do for this. Then stop. Let's, you know, um, reverse brainstorm. Like, you know, like, take it in different directions. Um, uh, like, let's pick this one that we think is the worst idea and then take it to another activity. There's like, there's some, like, the nine questions game, you know, uh, ask why nine times or whatever. Right, and, right, like, right. Um, so then you, you start building on it. And then um, there's types of games for, like, inspiration. Oh, God. And, oh, I, I like the, I think for the inspiration ones, it's, it, well, I guess this is also the event that's come closing over um, empathy building, but um, we've done role-playing stuff where you, and we do practice, we play Dungeons and Dragons as a team, like just to practice role-playing is a, cool. a fun thing um, awesome. that's not supposed to be terrifying, but it's supposed to be fun. Um, like taking a persona or writing a- So cool, so nerdy. Specific use case or user story for somebody and like they're coming into a situation, like we might all have our different role we're supposed to play, but at one time, only one person can play the role at a time. And like really, Throwing somebody in a situation and saying, here's a scenario. It's almost like improv, right? Here's yeah. a scenario, and one of us has a, a role. That's cool. That they have rules we have to follow, and the other ones don't have to follow rules. And so we just kind of switch out, and I think it's really useful in terms of like putting people outside their comfort zones and helping them think um, not for the linear thinkers, non linearly, for the, you know, um, more like people like me, the chaotic yeah. thinkers, like for some frameworks on them, yeah. or whatever. So um, that is, we play games. That's really interesting. I can't really? think the, the game storming book, like which I've read multiple times. There's another one which I never know. Yeah, game storming. Um, 
like they outline all these games and what I did was read the book and then I took away all these little pieces and then so I'm sure some of these games are exactly as I described them in the book and some of them are like bits and pieces from games that yeah. I described in the book where I've you know like, stitched them back up and put it together in a different way but um, I think sometimes like really and we've done creative play like Lego can yeah. you can you like can you define a problem can you build a Lego figure that embodies this user like what would you build you know and I'm like it's just an activity and thinking but also like that kinesthetic like I'm yeah. actually moving so we've certainly done that. Very cool. I'm going to go through my little scribbles and see if there's anything I want to bother you about before we move to the next step. I, I mean, one thing that I'm really still curious about, I would love to be curious about, and you know, uh, to share to whatever degree you feel comfortable about these, because this is what we're doing here is an open project, but I'd love to see any examples that you have of some of these items. Like, if there's any examples of affinity diagrams that you feel comfortable sharing, examples of templates or brands, um, you can get back to me later on this, by yep. the way. Um, if there's any books that you have about this stuff in the office, I'd love to just take a picture to see what you've got. Um, I'm very curious to hear how things like your templates, your games, and stuff would actually. Work. We're getting close. Um, yes, we are. Um, so these notes are usually just for me to figure out what to ask you next. They're not really my note notes because I have these videos. So I'm going to show. I'm going to do this. This is what I took. These notes I took. These horrible scribbles during this meeting. <laughs> In full transparency, this one's really messy. <laughs> um, I think I got the most interesting, important questions answered. We're in an hour. Unless you have something to pick them up. Okay. I've got pictures of stuff, so I was just checking to make sure I deleted them. Okay, great. Remember perfect management? Yes, yeah, that's what we're talking about. This whole thing is so meta. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> I'm really going to artifact right now. Um, okay, let's pause. I want to stop the video to make sure that it doesn't like go on my phone and that you know, it's screwed up. Yeah, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we'll do a quick usability test and we'll get you out of here uh, shortly. Okay, so before we do quick. Great. It's been a while. We have to stop. Be back. What's up, squad? We're back. Here we go. Uh, Quick break. We were talking continuing about on. Um, books. And actually, so we have the camera on a second. So I'll show you a second. So quick. These books. Wait. Zoom in. What books? Well, Christina brought to show. And actually, so we have the camera on a second. So I'll show you a second. So quick. These books. Well, I can't super tell. But also, it's fine because... Um, I think they're mostly Donald Norman ones. And the one that was important, I got from here. So, continuing on. I want Christina Brock to show me. Many Donald Norman books, so I was just talking about something. Yeah. And then and this book was my game stand. That's not good. Huh? I've never heard of that. I'm very excited to check it out. Um, and so we have a, we do a rough usability test of our early product of what this thing is. Now, you being a UX person, you've done these before. So I don't need to run through all the rules for you. you know don't that, judge me. <laughs> not judge that, you know, your technology. It's not a user test. <laughs> <laughs> it's a user test. My philosophy is really early and often, so this is going to be crappy. Okay, and if you don't say so, I'm going to know you're lying. So I want to hear the full, I don't have to tell you. Maybe my bar is really, really... <laughs> it's really low. That'd be great. That'd be great. Or anything about the bar is good. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, I've been working on this, but I am, I've done this before. I don't have to mess with sensitive about hearing, like, what about my designs needs improvement. So as long as it's not, like, a personal attack on my clothing or my face, how, then it's, it's fine. I want to hear it all. Okay. And I know you're going to do, like, a, you're going to talk out loud, and you're just going to speak out loud, and this sort of give me a straight of what you're doing is to go through so we can get as much bandwidth and feedback as possible. Yes. I'm not going to do a traditional task for this to have you sign up, take a look, see what you would do, and then um, we'll um, only go through some tasks. Okay. Boring. Anything else? Anything else? Do a little checklist on itself. Okay. Do you about design or your company? I can say that loud. Oh. All right. That's the first thing you <laughs> All right. You've heard about this thing, you get here. Okay. Here we go. Do what you do. All right. That's the first thing you notice. Run amazing live meetings. And Sally, Jesse, Raphael, right next to it. <laughs> Hold on. Sally. <laughs> Who's Sally Jesse Raphael? <laughs> That's Sally Jesse Raphael. I have heard of this person. Oh, because of the goggles, I think. Kind of funny. So, what are these about so far? On like, what's the difference from um, WebEx or like that? Yeah. Like immediately, uh, other tools start popping. I had like run amazing live meetings. I really went to like video meetings. I don't know yeah. why, but um, that's really interesting. That makes total sense. Okay. Uh, so now I'm like scrolling around, introducing Shuffle Ward. I see a familiar face. Uh, what's on my like Shuffle? Mm -hmm. So this is a video that I have not clicked on because I'm hesitant to click on videos right off the bat. Mm -hmm. 
Um, scanning, get fresh after collaborative work <clears throat> in collaborative meetings. And because of the question you asked, which was I forget the one I just said about when I said about the WebEx thing. Yeah. Um, you didn't. Your question was not meeting, but it made me question my assumption about remote meetings. Because <coughs> I'm like reading this, going, "You mean in person or remotely? Like oh, you yeah. mean video meeting or like me in the room with my team?" Um, well, maybe live to you meant you can run live meetings but without technology. The technology lets you run live meetings. Yeah. This is naturally a remote meeting. Yeah, exactly. That was, the, I think, the, we walked through that assumption yeah. that I made. Um, we oh. turned around, everyone was a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so one thing that as I'm skimming through, what's resonating with me, and I mentioned this on my phone earlier, make sure everyone is heard because not everybody thinks while they're talking. Some people need to go away and think about things and come back, and then often those voices are lost in the moment. Um, Okay, so now I would 100% transparency. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, that first. It seems pretty exclusive. Oh yeah. It's in private data, and I can join a waitlist. That means it's like hyping it up. Yeah. We're gonna watch this. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm in shuffleboard, oh, and I'm just gonna show you what it's like to run a meeting <laughs> in shuffleboard today. So the first thing we're gonna do if we're gonna run a meeting as a facilitator is go to getshuffleboard.com. Now I'm just gonna click start meeting from one of our pre-existing templates, or maybe a template that you've already set up. We can name our meeting like this week's sprint retro. And then we're gonna see this screen that we can share with the rest of our meeting. So maybe if you're connected to a projector, you can put this on the wall, you can cast it to a TV in your meeting room. The point is that everybody's gonna see what's happening in your meeting as you run it. And you wanna take this link here, this is the share link, and uh, share with the rest of the people who are in this meeting either in Slack or email or however you wanna do it. Um, and this screen on the right will show what they see. Uh, so basically they're just gonna get a quick welcome screen. When we start the meeting, um, basically each template provides a series of prompts. These are sort of open-ended questions that everybody in the meeting is going to answer. So over here they might say something like, I like shuffleboard, or they might say, we want better coffee, or um, I think we should try more user research. After you've given everybody a few minutes for each prompt, then you can go back and direct everybody's attention to the main screen in the room. As a facilitator, you can tap to reveal each card and show what its contents are one at a time. So maybe we would talk about liking shuffleboard, doing more user research, and wanting better coffee. Now, the people who are participating in the meeting can also see everybody's answers as they're revealed in their own device, and they can update the ones they think are most important. Um, so if you're building your own meeting, you can do a series of prompts with any question. You know, you could ask, uh, what went really well about our sprint this week, or what do we want to improve for next time? If you're doing brand strategy, it could be, what attributes of a brand do you think are most important for us? But any meeting where you basically have to get a bunch of people in a room and you want to generate or get ideas out of their heads and share them and talk about them and walk away with something sort of like a consensus. So it's like, I'm trying to synthesize it. Like, I'm trying to apply as I'm listening to the video. Um, Not building an agenda. Oh, technically, it could be used to build an agenda. It's, it's like if sometimes we'll ask people when we're um, brainstorming, right? You will write one idea down, first sticky note, put it up, yeah. and then we go through and we talk about them and we sort them. And so you're creating a virtual sticky note board for things like that. And then do you want all the questions that are in my head? Pause for one second. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can fix my so I did, I paused the video part way through um, to try to just, you know, I was listening and synthesizing and get out. But I, I, I'm, right now at this point I'm thinking it's like a virtual sticky note board um, in the meeting. And so the things that I'm like questioning are like, I'm assuming we can control what the prompts are and like customize it for the meeting. And then my question is how long does that take? And then, um, and then my, I'm, at this point I'm like really curious, like what's the output of this? Like I want to know what it's going to make. Yeah. I want, that's what my question is. This format is really, really good for. I've had a lot of effective use of this format, just doing it myself with Post-its and Sharpies. And I know it's a really common format often, but it's pretty tough to use and run because you just have to deal with a lot of Post-its and Sharpies and stuff. And also, it's really, really not good for remote teams. And it's a really important meeting format. So if you have a remote team, this can really help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, and most important thing is that when you're done, once you hover over the platform. Yeah. Because, like, if I go back by, like, a couple seconds. So when you were saying that, because I already kind of inferred that it was for a remote team. Like, yeah. though, I already inferred for those values. So the, the questions that I had were, like, I was looking at, these are things people suggested. Sam, zero likes. Sam, one likes Sam. So because it's you, I was like, is this the name of the person who wrote the card? Like, is there such, sometimes is it about anonymity or is it about like um, attributing ideas to people? And then these, this like concept, what is the purpose of the like concept in terms of like, can you, again, is there anonymity or is this about like assigning great alliances? <laughs> Or, right. Well, there's a, is there, what would the, you know, the political dynamics of writing a meeting like this? Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, and most important thing is that when you're done, you know, you have a report here yep, on everything you had in the meeting. So you don't have to take pictures of all these posts and try to read people's chicken scratch. You can just see for each prompt, what were the questions, what were the answers that each person gave, and how many people like those answers. Um, Shuffleboard's in private beta right now, so you can go to getshuffleboard.com to sign up, and you'll get notified when I launch the official app to the public. Um, I'm also recording all the entire... <laughs> So the questions in my head, I would have paused this video yeah. and then I would have done this, scrolled up and down to see if I could, I missed something. Cause now I've got questions in my head around like, I want a story. 
of somebody using it. Yeah. Like you walked me through it, and I, I'm trying to synthesize that into a story of how we would use it. Right. Um, but I, I want a story of someone using it, and which is a narrative. I mean, I want a yeah. narrative. Um, and then in that, I want like. I immediately, like, I told you I, this thing, make sure everyone has heard resonated with me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, I get it. Everyone can get, it's not speaking, they can put their, type their words out and put it there. And then I was like, does that solve the problem of people who don't think about it? Like, mm-hmm. like who need yeah. time? So, like, I'm starting to go through, in the narrative that I'm trying to construct, there's little things that are pinging me around um, that. Because I'm thinking about our situation, like, Chris as an engineer is super outspoken, and Lily as an engineer is super, um, like, introverted, and um, they're both super smart. And so... Um, I want to give Lily the space to like for her communication yeah. style to like go away and think about things and come up with insights and get her stuff. And that could just be about like how I run the meeting, right? Um, not the tool. Um, so immediately I'm like reviewing the things in my team that I'm like trying to apply to this one, yeah. if it's or not. Um, and what do you think? You know, how does that sound? Do you think this would be helpful or not helpful to Lily as it stands? What you understand about right now? I mean, I think the things I'm starting to in terms of value for the team is like, yeah, I mean, because of the way Lily likes to work, she does work remotely, mm. and so sure, that would be great, so that she doesn't have to come in for the meeting. Um, and by remotely, I mean like probably two blocks away. You know, like <laughs> we sometimes work, people just work from coffee shops or, or at home or in the office or part, you know, split their days up. And so I think not having to, like I have uh, tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, sorry, uh, Tuesday, I have, um, we're trying to plan end of year goals for the whole team and trying to get, it's an all hands meeting. So how do we get everyone in this room mm-hmm. um, for that? And then, uh, so my, I'm running this through that yeah. scenario, like would, what I want to do in that meeting with this sort of the purpose. So what do you think? I'm finished thinking about it, but the initial part is like, I, right now I'm, I'm not, I, my reaction is not 100%. What percent does it serve? Yeah. Is it 10%? Is it 50%? Like, what is it? So that is, because, so the, we have a very, like a set, like numeric goal for something. So I'm like, this is the big goal. In each of our areas, can we come up with sub goals? Like, or like that, like whatever tasks, strategies like that you think would work in your own area to apply to that would get us there and then um, can we look at how those work with each other or not work with each you know like apply to that would get us there tasks, strategies like that you think would work in your own area to apply to that would get us there and then um, can we look at how those work with each other or not work with you know like and have we be aligned on how all of us decide to get to this and because of course you're not in a silo you de- all of them will have dependencies so we want to expose dependencies so when I think about saying okay our end goal is this for the year, um, fiscally or whatever. Yeah. And engineering, come up with like, what does this mean for you guys? So first I want people to understand the implications for each of their areas, and then I want them to generate ideas in each of their areas to have, help get toward that goal. And um, and then if there's a lot of them, prior, like take a look and prioritize it. So what I'm saying is it 10% or 50%, like it's 10% just like collecting the ideas, mm-hmm. and then um, voting on, like that's, that's a, to me a low level of interaction, then can we take the ideas and can we run them through other activities on here, is the question I have. What activities would that be? Sorting. Yeah, that's what mentioned before. Can we do sorting? Um, can they operate like, like when we do it on the sticky note? Um, that sticky note will be used um, in a say infinity diagram, mm-hmm. and a lot of times it'll be done on the whiteboard or on a, we have butcher paper too that we can take to the wall yes. and we can circle the groups and name them, and, and then we can start like rip that off, take a picture, rip that off, and then start another piece of butcher paper to sort them in a different way and rename them, and then look back at those pictures. Yeah. Um, but then we take lift up those sticky notes and we put them on say a quadrant analysis. Yeah. And then when that's done, then we pick up those sticky notes and we start listing them almost like a backlog, like for a prioritization activity. Done. Then we pick up those sticky notes and we start listing them almost like a backlog, like for a prioritization activity. Yeah. Um, and then look back at those pictures. Yeah. Um, but then we take lift up those sticky notes and start or two that we can take to the wall yes. and then we can circle the groups and name them and, and then we can start like rip that off, take a picture, rip that off, and then start another piece of butcher paper to sort them in a different way and rename them and then look back at those pictures. Yeah. Um, but then we take lift up those sticky notes and we put them for honestly a quadrant analysis. Yeah. And then when that's done, then we pick up those sticky notes and we start listing them almost like a backlog, like for a prioritization activity. Um, like we take the insights we came up with from those trivia and say we have prioritization and put them in the order and yeah. then we start maybe adding things to them like assignments or due dates or like yeah. and then we do take a picture of that and then maybe somebody has to go into Trello and enter them and whatever. So yeah. that's what I yeah. think about so in that specific meeting that we're going to do a bunch of activities with the same sticky note and it's going to be a pain in the ass coming out because we're going to have a bunch of photos mm-hmm. and or random scribbles on half ripped butcher paper yeah. um, and it's going to be a pain in the ass and someone's going to have to like sit down and try to make sense of it um, and then we will like recycle those but those sticky notes were used for like four activities right fascinating because that is what I, I, I want you to run shuffleboard for that meeting um, okay. and it sounds like it's if I can rephrase it sounds like at the high level 
the contribution and stickies and sharing is like checking a box for you. Mm -hmm. Step one. Okay, we need to be able to get stuff from people, they need to share it. Check. Mm -hmm. Step two is all these other dimensions. So so in my brain to like the people in the video, I'm thinking like, okay, well, I don't need to worry too much more about like making sure the link is shorter or whatever. I need to make sure that this content that comes in can actually be shuffled, rearranged. And what's new is well, we're not there yet, but that's the goal. <laughs> is that we need to get it rearranged and make it so that you can and what you're really saying you're it's really just music saying that it needs to be the same sticky notes that we shuffle in different ways. Mm -hmm. It's not about rearranging or grouping or categorizing or affinity, clumping once and then moving on. Mm -hmm. It's about doing it different ways and having the results from one thing so it feeds into the next. Mm -hmm. Or the groups from one feed into the quadrants of the next. The quadrants of one feed into the prioritized list of the next. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it could a sticky note could be used in multiple activities and then become um, like a user story on backlog yeah. for Scrum. Totally. And or some of its individual test lists, like if you look above my desk right now, some of those may have come from a meeting yeah. that I like picked up and moved. Um, we've discussed the difficulty, we've had this exact debate um, with the team about like Trello is okay, sticky notes are okay, we have trouble managing between Trello doesn't really, that's not really the functionality of Trello, right? right. Uh, mimics it in some ways, but it's not really the functionality of Trello. So like when the utility of the idea collection is to collect and document, but actually put to you like there's more utility than that. Like you do stuff with it. Yeah. So it is. Um, so oh, ten minutes left. Yeah. I'd love to run through a quick demo and see if it works well. Okay. Is there else anything else on this page that is calling out to you? Something you have question about? I mean, you know, I mean, the call to action. Is that or I mean, like, oh, no, I don't have an account. So do I create an account or do I join the waitlist? Yeah. Is my question. Oh yeah, that's easy. Um, which was first? Uh, and I'm assuming they'll tell me. If I try to get rid like, yeah, there's a waitlist or, <laughs> or whatever. So I think my um. And then after this, run amazing live meetings, to me, even though, like, I think there's a difference between, huh, that, that uh, sparked a little curiosity in me, and then the reaction was, the curiosity reaction was, how is it different then, and I started listing things in my mind. Mm -hmm. I feel like, as a problem statement, um, like, if you had, um, <laughs> I think this is being a jerk, but like, like, don't lose another one of Lily's ideas again. You know? <laughs> right? yeah, like, if you, awesome. would, but you would obviously have to agree with that in a generic way, but like, the the problems that are hitting me, yeah. I would never categorize as that. Running right, amazing live meetings is like, well, my meetings are amazing or amazing cares. But they're well, live. Right, right, they're right, dead. Right. I don't know what okay. that means. So it's too ambiguous in terms of a value statement for me. What's hitting you is never lose another one of your team's great ideas again. Yeah. What's this, one? this one? Like, when that hit me, make sure everyone is heard. Like, yeah. And then the other big problem to me is the one I brought up is like, what do you do something useful with all this shit you produce in a meeting? Like, that is like the thing, right? That's such a great way to say it. Right? I guess. But like, you make a lot of crap yeah. in a meeting, and like, it's pictures and whiteboard stuff and scribbles and our butcher paper, which you can haul out of the closet, and That's our stuffed over sticky notes, and the room is a mess. And like, so if you want to follow that down, like, end the meeting and be able to walk out of the room with that 20 minutes of cleanup, like, yeah. <laughs> or three hours of like transcription. Yeah. Like I don't. Those are the big problems to me that would pull me in. That are not generic. That make me think of WebEx. I don't want you to think of WebEx. Okay. Well, that one made me think of WebEx. And then Sally Jesse Raphael was like, Oh, I that was. Exactly what I wanted. I, I think on video there's somewhere me writing these taglines that says like, well, this is right, but we'll test and find out what I wrote to me. So yeah. now I think I know. All right, I just have a really good idea. I have this is like just a pile of gold. I can't tell you how useful this has been. <laughs> this is incredible. Testament to the user experience is our process. It Prototyping, is. And sharing, getting things. But you have been particularly helpful, and so many of the things you say, I'm just like running through. I know I have a million follow-up questions. Um, uh, well, we have like right, real quick for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Can we just have you click join waitlist? Okay. And see what happens. Join the waitlist. Create your account sign with Google. Or do you have a account? Log in. Well, I don't really have a choice. What would you rather do? What's your ultimate way of logging in? Uh, I'm old. I don't like single sign on things like Facebook. I yeah. never use Facebook. So when everyone's like, you know, sign up with Facebook, I'm like, oh, look. Um, I, like, I don't like tying things back to these data giants who yeah. like are jackasses. So I would have wanted to like create a login password. Email. Email password. Yeah. Pass, yeah totally. it's, I, but totally. I, I understand that I'm like a dying demographic. So. No, I, I, I'm with you. It's just that I'm trying to figure out how important is it because. That's just painful. Yeah. What would have happened if you saw that screen sign with Google on your if you were your computer? Would you have been likely to fail or reluctantly click sign up? Do I do it? Yes. My question, which I muddied it up, my answer is like if, if your problem statement on the front page had been more compelling, I would easily have clicked the Google sign up. Yeah. When it says that and if 
like I still had a lot of questions about it, I would have like not, I would have paused and you may have lost me because I am that like, I don't like them. <laughs> I'm just like that much about like hi. So people want not sign up with Google, but if the landing page had been more compelling, she thinks I could get away with it. But I believe that if the landing page wasn't compelling, she would have never clicked sign up in the first place or join waitlist in the first place. So the problem is not sign up with Google. The problem is the landing page isn't compelling, but we know how to make it more compelling. We're gonna do a lot of that next. I think that's gonna be a big effort push for ours next. We're getting so much good stuff here. So I think the issue is not the sign up method. I think I'm gonna prioritize fixing the landing page and the marketing copy and your messaging. Everything together. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. Because I have another vetting, like, I have an email account, a Gmail account that I use to sign up for things. Right. But I'm, there's one that's just junk and there's one that's serious. Oh, that's so. where I vet it and then that way you, you still one layer for my real email account. Right. That's cool. gets me. So I have, I have a process. Okay, so we're in shovel board. Sprint retrospectus. Was that good? What was good? What was not good? Customer journey. Simple brainstorm. Mm -hmm. So this is the same. Yeah. This is simple. Yeah. Fart sounds. Static elements. I hate that part. Ugh. Somebody wrote that in there. Not loving it. So that, that doesn't really confuse what just happened. So I'm clicking through somebody else's things. Yeah, this I'm going is, through someone's underwear. database before. You would have found you have a blank. These would be empty. Okay. So, imagine so don't look at this. Okay. But imagine that these three ones are there. Okay. So the thing I would probably do is customer journey because this is just a thing. Um, what is it? They're not. Join this meeting. Please set your device to do not disturb. Okay. I'm clicking on that title and wanting to change it. Um, And then I assume I just want to see why can't I write things? Maybe I can. So yeah. You're stuck. I'm I'm stuck. Um, what will happen? I'm, try it. I'm clicking on words. Clicking on next. So you click on words to edit them in place. So yeah. what was your intention when you clicked on this? You were hoping to. I think just preview what you were about to, what the meeting might be? I was actually going to role play. Okay. <laughs> I think I was actually going to try to... What scenario were you role playing? Um, well, I was the one starting the meeting. Okay. Customer journey. And so I entered the landing page, saved the joint meeting. I assume at that point I would have um, copy and pasted into my Slack to everybody cool. um, and then click start the meeting. And then here, the first thing that came up, the question, I did not like the question. Um, and I wanted the, to change the question. And that's the first yes. thing I did as the meeting moderator. And then okay. when I couldn't answer it, I was like, am I not allowed okay. to participate in the meeting too? And maybe that's good, but maybe yeah. I needed to also, because when we have a small team, we don't have luxury necessarily, so we have just this to be moderator. Okay. So um, that, that's why I was trying to click on words to make it let me type things in. And then, so really this feels like somewhat all the other team members would be broadcasting at me here right. as a moderator. That's just funny. And then go through to the end. Whew, meeting over. Thank you for coming. Finish meeting. And then uh, there's my meeting, customer journey. Clearly, I was role playing and nobody role played with me. Um, and then this present button. That's not super obvious. I don't know what it is. But do we want to present it to start the meeting over again? Over. What, were you, what, were you, what were you hoping to get from that present button? Or the present sure? button I thought would be like present the findings of the meeting. Oh, yeah. Like in a different format. Totally. Right? Totally. So, like, sometimes uh, if I pulled up on our meeting notes, like, sometimes we have to like put the meeting notes in there. Yeah. Like, it's like a little bit of a process. Yeah. Um, and then we'll like send out emails and things like that. Yeah. And it's a different visualization of what happened in the meeting, whether it's pure text or something, people photos or it links into other things. Yeah. Um, and either way, it's like somebody's version of like yeah, some sort of translation. Of yeah. And that's why I was going to take whatever was here on the 
screen, if we had stuff here, and put it into some sort of format to like share. Gotcha. That's a good way to do. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I think well, we're definitely out of time. I've taken way more time as vendors than I thought I would. So thank you for being patient and rolling with it because everything we're doing is really useful. And um, I think I. I definitely know, I think I really do know what would be, I think I have a really good idea about what I would need to do with this product to make you run your next audience with it. Definitely, so definitely communication, marketing, and copy is actually one of the parts I find most difficult uh, compared to the product stuff. So definitely some really good ideas for improvements there. Um, thank you so much. It's going to be ready by Tuesday? Because all hands me, Tuesday. If I can get this, yeah. well, what, I'll tell you what, what would I need to fix in order for you to be really good on Tuesday? Um, let me type in the title. What if you type in the title now? And then let them contribute to it, right? Yeah, if it was exactly as it was, but you could type in the titles, would you use that? Yeah. You would. Yeah. Um, would you be interested in hearing about our early customer pricing? <laughs> nice job! <laughs> <laughs> Jump. Uh, well, it's, I think it's impressive. <laughs> okay, uh, now you're falling down. You're like, <laughs> let me, um, let you think about the value of this tool, and I'll be sending okay. you something afterwards. If this was a real, it's not, it's not a real sales meeting, but let me ask you this. What, what, are, what are your, can you tell me what you might expect to pay for a tool like this? Um... Okay, so and the model in my head is like, um, like Slack. Just yeah. So let me tell you what I was doing there. First of all, she said I will use it in my meeting. And I said, would you like to hear about our early customer pricing? Which basically means, would you actually buy it? And by the way, I value you as an early customer. What she said I should have done is instead of just think of pricing on the spot, is like think about the value that it will provide to you and come back with a proposal for her. Which is really interesting. Maybe that means I should be selling this. Um, basically, which that's how you would do it if I was a salesperson. If I was selling this software, that's how I would do it. But um, let me see what this is. Um, I'm not trying to sell this individually, although maybe I should be. What I was planning on doing is. Um, giving it, sharing it as a SaaS tool that you can purchase online so that I can scale instead of having to do individual sales. So what I'm trying to figure out from her, I mean, it would be nice if I had her buy it. I should, it would be good to get a purchase, but what I'm really trying to do is figure out what expectation she has for the cost so that I can make sure, I don't know, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to pr the pricing model completely. The value, I could have asked, should have asked the value what, what value she thinks it would offer. But what I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of how she even wants to pay for it at all. Is it a flat rate? How would that work? Maybe I like, I'm jumping the gun on that a little bit. I don't know. Um, she, let's just say she wanted a quarter a price later, maybe. Oh, she was also a little joking, but <laughs> not really. It's, it's it just so happens that's the tool we use most and most regularly. And to some degree, it's also like Google Fit, whatever. Google, like we pay five dollars a month per person. Slack, we went on six dollars or whatever. Like it's the same with our payroll HR system. Yeah. Um, like any other tools where we're in it together, it's per person per month. And that's what, and then usually a discount for like the pay bill. Yeah. Um, and so what I would think about is if you get a tool that just had the titles and then what it does now, I wouldn't pay for it. Because okay. I was like, it's not enough yet to overcome the pain in the ass of the better. However, if it started allowing me to move things around mm. and spit out the different, like aggregate, like yeah. off of customer journey, here's your, um, here's your cards or here's your, you know, like, or whatever, yeah. like here's all your different things that you had going on in that meeting. Um, and then here's the output for each of them, like okay. all tied together. Then I'm going to look at it, but I'm probably still thinking of it in terms of like that under $10 per person per month model. Okay. Of, yes. And per person, what would that mean to you? Contribute more product contributing your meeting? Uh, no, it means anyone with an email address from our company. Oh, so, any, so you, get, you get it from the company, and then however the company is, that's what you pay, and then anybody can use as much as they want. So uh, yeah. I mean, as much as you want. Like, I understand those often tier, like, tiers or limitations, like certainly Google and Slack and all those things they have, like, up until this many bits yeah. and butts, and that, or up until like, this much functionality, this is the plan you're on. Um, I, as a company, that, like, we, we're small, and we don't have that many people I mean, we don't have any email. We don't just have a bunch of email addresses for people. So, like, 
but 100% participation is generally the norm. Yeah. So like on Slack, we don't have some people that are just some yeah. channel visitors. No. And like it doesn't make sense for us. So I always think like it's 100% participation across the company. When I'm pricing things out, I think about 100% yeah. participation across the company. And therefore, all the other models are like, do you have an alt how they are right. email address? You plug in the email addresses for those people, and that's like you're paying for um, yes. Yes. It's, it's, this is more useful than email. Like I'm really trying to figure out modeling what people's expectations are on that. It sounds like this is not this is not the kind of thing that you would pay for to use as a customer for Tuesday because of the shuffle, which is what the, the grouping and ordering is what we expected. But it, it sounds like you might be really awesome to get your team has early beta customers testing the process. Of course. <laughs> I tried to hold That's in for all the recording. Oh, you did. Oh, no. it's too much. Sorry. Um, <laughs> would you guys be potentially open to being a for no cost? No, pricing that was fine. Let's just be clear about that. I had to ask um, how that would work. Would you be interested in potentially being like an early alpha user and trying it out first? Yeah. I think that's like, we've always as a startup, like Slack did free Slack before we did real Slack. Yeah. Because that problem we mentioned about stickiness yeah. and how it doesn't, like sometimes we want a tool to stick and then we don't yeah. know either culturally it's an issue or, or there's no, the tool doesn't fit our needs exactly. And then it's, and there's lots of reasons why stickiness I think doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it is about like, we didn't learn how to use it properly. Yeah. And then later we're like, oh, gee, God did that too? Oh, we could have done. Um, and certainly then there's other things that force us to pay for things. Like, yeah. you know, like Slack, we just get a wall. They started like hiding all our historical stuff. Yeah. So, and we use it as like a database of all the communications. We're like, shh, well, we can't. Yeah. yeah, we're like, oh, no, we gotta search. We can't search back that far. So we have to start paying. Um, but we always get converted in, those sense, in that sense. And I think yeah. for us, like understanding, it's hard for us to make a choice about payment upfront when um, we're not sure we're gonna use it. Yeah. And it's because sometimes we don't have our app together and um, and we're unclear on that proposition. Yeah. But um, yeah. Okay. Well, I said it before. Now it's even more useful than it was before. It was so useful in the conversation. Now it's even more useful. <laughs> Seriously, um, you can always go back and watch this video. And the next one we're going to do next is watch this entire video again and take notes through the whole thing and like put it through a backlog and prioritize it and figure yeah, out any fixes. Like, <laughs> this is too many levels here. This is like turtles on top, turtles on top, turtles. Um, okay, thank you so much. Um, if you're watching this video, stay tuned for the next one. We're going to another one today. I'm going to be like overwhelmed, but um, really, I'm super helpful. And thank you. Okay, stay tuned. Hi. Hello. We're doing our day. All right, we got through Christina. So much good stuff here. Um, So I'm just trying to move actionable things into Asana.
probably get this book too, huh? I'm a fan of mental models. One eighty. Oh, shit. What happened? What? Wow, popular book. Okay, so where's our pricing? Do we have a pricing strategy item? I guess this is this one. Um, So a lot of this stuff isn't actionable beyond just update our shuffleboard marketing copy. I mean, that's the next thing we're going to do after this, really. Um, I mean, I guess the big one here is like rearrange slides that let you arrange That's a big one.
this one is the same actually as uh, the grid thing. HMW stands for how might we. It basically is a, a goal we have without being very specific about the answer, because I don't think it's obvious how that would work yet.
lot of this is going to be marketing material comments, I think. Okay, guys, so we've got some good notes in our backlog of what we need to do. We need to still go through and organize the backlog, and um, a lot of this is going to mostly affect our marketing copy. I mean, that's a huge part of what we're doing here. But I think this has been um, definitely super helpful, extremely helpful. I want to do Becky's stuff still to today still if I can, but I want to take a shower, get some food. Uh, I just started first thing this morning, so I haven't even started my day yet. It's already new. But we got all the good work done. Uh, let's, I don't know what that should be miscellaneous, I guess. Auto post new meeting links. Other services. Maybe we should just rename this task growth, you know? On car. Or the, the tag growth. How are we doing on time? 47. It is on car. I'm curious how this would work. What would we do if we had um, like a grouping? So you could have like a thing where it says like title of the slide. Like you could have a little thing that says color by person and then if you select it and you change it there's a little drop down or something and it says group etc so maybe there's just a little drop down there that you could just change it and see how things are grouped right in line there it's a possibility I don't know I guess this would require So much good stuff.
Okay, we still need to reorder this. Okay. So to do today still, ideally, notes on Becky interview, notes on Becky usability test, prioritize backlog, bonus um, marketing copy from user interview notes. Green should be everything to do with money. So growth, promotions, PR, marketing, website, maybe that should be a variant of green too, huh? It's really a different kind of thing entirely. It's like talking to customers. It's also talking to customers. I'm just kind of messing around here. All right, I'm gonna take a break. Recharge. I'll be back for Becky stuff. See you soon. Hey, y'all, I'm back. Uh, I changed my clothes. I had some food. Let's get back into it. So we did Christina's notes just now. We're gonna do Becky interview, Becky usability test. It's a backlog before we wrap today, ideally. Um, I had a couple other ideas, shower thought style, while I was stepping away, and I haven't recorded them, but I wanted to add them here. One was this follow-up with uh, Becky and Christine. I want to do this soon after I do the landing page. Maybe we need like a soon category here, actually, because this is a little bit... Um, soon. All right. Um, I want to do the follow up. I'm just going to say like, oh my God, I can't drag these things anymore. So that's, um, I'm going to say quick follow up. Quick video. Um, because I want to, since we've done this recently, I want to like get their feedback on what I'm doing here. Um, so I just want them to like tell me if I'm on the right track. So once I get this homepage stuff done, that'll be maybe next time we'll do that. I also want to, I think I can do this if I get my... 
I'll get my tags back if I do this. Okay. Um, also, I was thinking about this. Instead of a follow-up interview with Jason, although that might be useful, and Kelsey, I'm going to say, I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to say, instead of an interview with these guys, I'm thinking of doing a design critique. Because although it would be good to, like, talk to them about what they want and, like, what's working and sell them, I think... They're the ones who can really uniquely give me uh, design feedback on this thing. I'm not sure when that would happen. Probably before launch sometime. But I'm going to move it to the top here. I think that's useful. Um, another idea I had was that this is sort of a marketing idea. I'll put it in the um, before launch thing. It's basically like um, find UXers product say PMs on Twitter um, especially people who are posting whiteboards I feel like if you're posting pictures of whiteboards it's a sign that you've taken a picture of a whiteboard and those are the people we want to sell to so maybe those would be good people to start for like early customers or something I'm just thinking of growth channels and that just kind of popped into my head like you know what we could just talk to people on Twitter I think it uh, popped into my head because I was uh, thinking about Christina and uh, the indie young person she mentioned and um, just remembered how much there is on like UX Twitter, how many UXers are on Twitter talking about stuff. So those are people who I think are probably a good fit. Like they're a little bit adventurous, they care about their thing, they want to do a good job. Um, and maybe they want to show off what they've done with cool tools. So um, that may be a cool growth channel. Okay, I want to come back and organize this, I think, in a little bit, but not right now. Uh, I want to get through Becky. So let's do another doc. And continue where we left off. Hey, this is our we have two usability tests today. You are saying okay. um shocked and I had to look but that wasn't functionally you believe why I like started this project with those mm -hmm. other projects. Due to your work, which is like energizing people. Um I don't want to exude When am I gonna like, shut up? Um I wanted to talk about times when you've run and so you were actually the first test I've done where I've talked to people who have um run uh, who have you seen a little bit of this product a little bit already, so you know a little bit what it is. So trying to ignore the product that you've seen from this project so far. I want to talk about like what it's like running meetings when you run them. What it's like specifically to get a bunch of input from a bunch of different people. Oh, it's Sam. Some kind of clarity and consensus around. Keep talking. Which sounds very fancy. Um, but I... When you're running those meetings. Okay. So I'll start with just a little background of the kind of meetings I'm running lately. Yeah. Um, so I am... Gosh, I think my technical role is the director of software solutions, which sounds very fancy. Um, but I... So I wear a lot of different hats because in essence, so I work at the University of Michigan right now in... Uh, we have an embedded software team in a research lab, which is not very common. Um, but so we... <laughs> We have a handful of software developers, we've got a UX designer, we also have someone who is a data curator, a data wrangler, um, and myself. And so I wear a variety of different hats, um, product manager, project manager, slash scrum master. Um, I'm the main QA resource as well for any um, type of, kind of manual testing we do of our apps that we build, uh, you know, testing a couple different browsers and different screen resolutions and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, gosh, I guess those are probably my main like threads. So a lot of times I'm running a variety of different meetings. So some of the meetings are just like project status meetings with people that are not very software agile type meetings at all. It's just like I have to talk to the to the docs, the researchers, the MDs, and the PhDs about what we're doing and hear from them what they need and kind of translate that. So I would never to them tell them, or uh, it's not often something where it's like a, an explicit. In those cases, it's not like a user interview. It's just me sitting in on their meetings, hearing what they need, and then taking that back and turning it into something that maybe I take my time to. So that's one type of meeting. I don't think we want to talk much about that. Within our, within my group, we try to run. Um, uh, it's actually a lot of it's designed started with things that happen in Menlo in Ann Arbor, um, a very Menlo esque agile shop. So we have uh, sprints. Our sprints right now are two weeks. I say right now because they had been week long sprints, and then currently we're in the middle of an experiment. Menlo is a um, company in Ann Arbor 
where I live, that runs, um, that is, does software development um, and also does training for like agile stuff. And they've written some books. They're very much like a um, consultancy of, um, in, you know, they're influential, I think would be fair to say. Um, So, I think these are the founders, yeah. So what am I thinking about? Why am I saying this? Well, they've been pretty influenced by Menlo, and Menlo might be somebody who'd be really interesting to talk to about this, so reach out to somebody at Menlo. Let's do that. Um, it would be a good time to do that. Um, say that. Did I just see a growth tag in there? Oh, different project. Okay, that's a cool idea. Continuing. Meant to see if two weeks feels better because we were feeling a little meeting heavy. Um, and so when we switched to two weeks, we kind of built meetings every two weeks at one week. So we have estimation sessions. We actually run those twice uh, in the sprint, so uh, weekly. Um, we have a kickoff meeting. We have some show and tell opportunities, both you know, devs showing what they're working on for the team or the designer giving feedback. Um, mm -hmm. Most of our show and tells are actually just internal with our, with our team. But sometimes they're, uh, you know, the, the, the better ones are when we bring outside users in for feedback. Um, and then, what do I say? Estimation, kickoff, and the retro. And we have retros um, at the end of every sprint. So um, one another thing to know, most of our team is co-located, except for one person. Um, and actually it's a little more complicated than that. One person works from home one day a week, one person works from a different office four days a week, and only comes into our office one day a week, one's part-time and doesn't work Monday to Friday, so it's a lot. Um, we have to be uh, very careful about when we're asynchronous and when we're synchronous, and when, you know, sometimes that is a big factor in our meetings, is kind of where are we all going to be to, to make this meeting happen. Does that answer? Yes. Okay. I'm talking about that, that asynchronous stuff. Like, is it is it prevent you from scheduling meetings? Is it what, what is the biggest pain point around asynchronous? Right. Big, well, there's a few. So let me see. You tell me how many I list after I list them all. So um, one is I, I am somebody who really likes to talk as opposed to say Slack, right? Yeah. So um, thankfully we're all in the same time zone within this group at least. And so oftentimes, you know, I've seen Slack really effective. I'm in a different Slack channel for a, a group that has some people in California, a large group of people in Europe, and then plenty of people in Boston. And so and for them, I've, they, they use Slack pretty effectively because they have to because of time zone constraints. We don't have as many of those, but I've seen a lot of times where we have conversations that get buried in misunderstandings about what somebody meant, or and, and people are typing before someone else has finished their statement. And all, I'm always one of the people that says, hey, can we just stop and have a quick screen share on this, a quick Google Hangout? Usually, I think you where you're using a software called Blue Jeans. Um, Zoom is very similar to some of these Zoom. So I'm always one who wants to talk it out. Um, I say in person, but I really just mean face to face. So I'm totally comfortable with um, it being on a screen share. But it's usually very easy with the other five of us that are in the same office to just kind of stand up and say, hey, can we just have a quick powwow on this? Um, it is not as easy to for that one poor guy who's in you know somewhere else and who's really just relying on us to ping him on Slack to even know to be aware. So so that's one hard thing is just to, to be able to. Um, to, to, to integrate when, um, you know, we, or we may have a conversation here in the room and then realize, oh shit, we forgot to tell him. Um, we didn't put it on Slack because we stopped, you know, because Slack was getting out of control or whatever. So, so that's one hard thing. We just have a hard time, I think, um, it's a, and it's a known problem that we're, honestly, it usually comes up in most retrospectives and we're always trying something new, but to share information when it's asynchronous like that too and when it's co-located because we might make a decision or we might have a quick talk about a document and we didn't um, bring that person in. Um, and so that's kind of difficult. Um, and then it's also, of course, you know, I'm sure you will experience it in these videos sometimes, but oh, hold on, my audio's not working. Oh, whoops, I was on mute. Whoops, yeah. I didn't realize, you know, so, so even the screen share stuff is difficult. Um, but then other issues, other pain points I think we have, we do have um, a variety of movie schedules. So some, the person that's not here on Mondays and Fridays makes it so that we can only, most of our meetings have to happen on Tuesday, Monday, Thursday, and we start getting a little fatigued, um, you know, because it feels like, oh gosh, we've got two meetings in a row, I'm, I'm done. Sorry, that was one more, I thought there was one more, Sam, and I'm forgetting it. So, um, oh, and I think, I guess anytime you have any type of meeting, like that, it's just difficult to collate the information that did get shared. Yeah. Right. How do you yeah. do that now? Like collating and sharing the results. Yeah. A couple different ways. So, um, so we're getting much better at um, just point out the Google, Google Doc at the beginning of some sort of meeting. If it's any type of meeting that's a, that has somebody on video, we try our best, and we're not always great at it. But if somebody pulls up a doc, just start typing, and then shares that link with the rest of us, so that we try to be um, on, on video as well. But typically, what happens, um, and this could be just because we haven't explicitly said, may set some ground rules for this. Often what happens is it's, I have a machine open and it is you know, my link that we're, that we're following. So I'm 
I'm on this a screen that I'm just sharing with the rest of the office and that one guy. So it's essence two callers. Um, and, and the reason I point that out is because sometimes other people aren't actually on their computers. They're just in the room with me and I'm on the computer. So even if we have some Google Doc where we're sharing things, it's not always that all of us are actively in the Google Doc. It might just be two of us. But so that's one way is we've been trying to just grab Google Doc. Um, for retrospective, well, let's see. Yeah, for retros, at least we used to do, do something on the whiteboard, take a picture of that whiteboard, put it in a Slack channel called, you know, hashtag whiteboard. Um, which doesn't work that well for us because we have a free slide, and so those go away after a while. Yeah. So, right, so Slack isn't a great spot for us to have as our archive. Yeah. So then we switched, we opened up a Trello board for our retros, and we would make um, a card. Like, in essence, um, sorry, I guess I have to go on a little side tangent about the retros we run. So oftentimes, uh, we used to run a, a version of a retrospective that in essence was what's going well and what's going not, not so well, and then pick a couple of those pain points to focus in on and, and make some action steps out of that, right? Some, some flavor of that. So for a while, we were doing one, I, don't, I think I just Googled and found this, um, and it was, you drew a picture of water and on the boat, and what filled your sails this week, and what was an anchor that weighed you down. In essence, right, same thing. What was going well, what was not going as well. So for a while, what we do is have, the, in the Trello board, there'd be two pictures, a picture of the boat, and you know, so in essence, the what went well, what didn't, and then another picture of the action plan. Um, the big problem with that was then, you know, nobody was going back to look at these action plans, and then guess what, next retrospective would come up, we complain about the same things, and then we'd say, well, whatever happened, we said we were gonna do this thing, how, how are we doing on that? We we're, not, we weren't, we're not very good at um, keeping track of the ongoing experiments that we're trying to run. So we're actually running a new, another experiment right now. Um, this is the memo part, the running experiments is the phrase they like to use a lot. But um, we just started using um, a different format for a retrospective that um, it, we, we saw it in the last blog, and it was called the Project Health Status Monitor, Project Status Health Monitor. Those four words, I might have the right order. Um, and in that, in essence, the idea there was uh, that if you can picture with me, rows of different project artifacts or project time points, project milestones, something. And then the columns are different dates when you do this health check. So for instance, maybe one of the things is how it is the team doing with um, communicating with the client or setting expectations with the client, let's pretend. Then you, the, the concept is you go ask the team at a retrospective moment to say, how are we doing with that thing? They give you a thumbs up or a thumbs up. Traffic lights, you know, red, yellow, green. And you watch, and you do that over time. And so you actually watch over time if you're improving in certain areas or hey, this is always red, what's going on? Or Whatever. So we tried, to, we modified a version of that just now to talk, because we noticed that a lot of our retro items were not so much, um, the tasks weren't things we could turn into Jira cards. We used Jira to manage our, you know, teacher bug backlog. Um, but the tasks we had were like, oh, we should change stand up and have it be, you know, we should do stand up this way, or we should change the, the dashboard that we're using for this. Or we, it was always, it, most times it was process things. Like, hey, we should have the designer come in at this point in the process of that stuff. So what we did in this retrospective experiment we're running now is we came up with process points. So how are we doing on information sharing? How are we doing on the initial setting of the requirements for a project. How are we doing on, I can't, I, there's like there's like a dozen of them. How are we doing on managing scope, for instance? Yeah. And then um, also, at the bottom of the spreadsheet, we've started making that be where all of our running experiments are going. So how, to, for instance, I said we're doing sprints right now two weeks instead of one week, that's one of the rows that says, do we still like the sprints at two weeks or do we think we should go back to one week or change it to some other increment of time? So that's been at least a way for us to keep track of the experiments we're running, sort yeah. of. Um, but it's hard to know like when that experiment was introduced. Like we, we literally just started adding the experiment stuff in our last retro two weeks ago. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, where were we? <laughs> what was I supposed to be telling you? <laughs> That's really, no, this is really on point and interesting. Okay. This is exactly relevant. The retro is what I was going to get to, yeah, right? Yeah. Of all those formats, I think, you know, well, actually, there's some that might, the estimating sessions might be interesting too, but I wanted to know how the book were like and, and what format they were in. I mean, that was all the right. questions I was going to ask. I'll tell you, one of the reasons we started to switch, um, that we switched is we just got, the boat one got a little stale, and we just wanted something mm -hmm. different. At every, and so there's a place, I think it's called like funretrospectives.com. Every once in a while, I just kind of go there, skim through some, and just try to spice it up a little. Cool. Um, so we've done some other ones. Another one we do, not I wouldn't say routinely, but that we like doing, we do maybe once every, or, you know, twice a year, is um, like a prospective. Instead of saying like what went well and what didn't go well before, we we kind of just um, switch the questions around. This is not my idea. Like we, we stole this from somewhere, right? But you know, in, at the next sprint, I'll be happy if, or it will be frustrating if, at the next sprint, we you know really sucked at defining requirements. So yeah. who knows? And it just kind of puts a little more um, proactive spin on it. Like hey, I can do something about this. Yeah. So, the reactivity. Like, well, what if we, we screwed it up again or something? Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Very so, cool. It, and it gives somebody ownership. Like, all of a sudden, if you volunteer something, like, I'll be really frustrated at the next sprint, you know, we did do a good job of, um, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm going to kind of hope that you'll help keep us accountable for that, right? right you know, yeah. it'll give you a little more ownership of what you can do to be, you know, be the change as opposed to just kind of have that gene about that we didn't do it again. Totally. So, yeah, so we do try to, we, we try to switch our retros a little bit. Um, oh, and I did. Real oh, quick. Um, I think she's talking about this idea of mixing up the retros. Let's try it. Let's see what funretrospectives.com is like. It also seems like Becky might be somebody who would appreciate some kind of browsing marketplace for workshops. We'll see. 
free online board. Ooh, ooh, competitor. Let's see what we got. Um, well, these are cool. Cool, let's try. Like to learn to act. I join. Cool. Change colors. This is pretty cool. I need to find somebody who's using this and see what's not working about it. I don't. I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, I'm changing the colors with the different types of stuff. I can print it. That makes sense. Maybe we should make like a competitors list or something. What did Luke email me about? It was like, um, let's see, is it in here? This one, Scrum Poker stuff. Let's make a, uh, let's make a folder for these. It'll be interesting to see where Shuffleboard fits into these. I mean, if there's no room in this landscape, fine. I can already imagine one scale of like a two by two, which could be, feel kind of crappy. Versus feels polish. Flexible versus just post-its. We'll see. Dev versus design, general, purpose, oriented. Okay. It's not bad that we have competitors. 
it's actually good because it means that somebody else is trying this. It would be bad if they were really, really good and nobody was ever using them. That would probably be worse. And if that happens, we might have to reconsider this project. All right. Let's get back into it. Insane. There was also a time where we switched. Do you know what Mural is? It's another, it's an oh, app. Mural. It's kind of like an on, uh, or online whiteboard app. Mural, M U R A L. Mural. Oh, okay. So mural, we tried for a while because in essence it has like um, the concept of sticky notes. So yeah. some of the you can drag over um, sticky notes, and so we tried to run retros that way for a while too. Because uh, sorry, I gotta go back. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. The, um, so you know, at one point you were talking about the co-location and asynchronous and things like that. Um, we we did look at our like. Um, plate of meetings and, and kind of picked which ones are more important to be co-located for and which ones we think aren't. And we, we designed our sprint cadence and mm -hmm. the day that that one guy who normally works at a different part of campus comes here with that in mind. So we said, hey, you come on Thursdays because it's more, most important for you to come for these meetings that we do. And we'll do those meetings on Thursdays, right? Yeah. So retro was one actually that didn't make the cut that we thought we could do co-located for a while. That's also kind of an experiment we're running on. Is he coming on the right day or are we having the right meetings with the right people at the right time? So um, for a while, when we were co-located, before we did that Google Sheet health monitor one, which is what we've been doing for the past like, month, I'd say, um, we were doing using Mural and doing, we did we just made a template on Mural of what went well, what didn't, and what should we do next time. And people would uh, all have to sign in together on their own. So everyone had to bring their laptop, and then everyone, um, it was funny, one person doesn't actually have a laptop on the team. The part <coughs> Excuse she me. She, a she only has a desktop. So we had to find her laptop so that this would work. <laughs> uh, she used her phone, but the Mural phone there is a little rough. Because um, you just, you want to see a lot more on your screen right. than, you, than you can on a phone. Have we looked at Miro before? It's something I've heard about, but I haven't really investigated to the shuffleboard because, as I said, I wasn't really exploring competitors. I do know it's a virtual whiteboard, which I don't think is going to be. I just don't like that idea. That's Jonas. I think Jonah used this one, or he used something similar. What else we got? Lots. You, oh my God. Um. Wormboard, that's a cool name. Um, okay. Lots of stuff. I don't really... That's good. I shouldn't like them because otherwise I'm not doing it. I was just kind of hope, part of me was actually hoping there'd be something better that like, you know, I wouldn't have to build this product. No, I want to build it. I want it to be successful. It's just funny. I was kind of expecting there to be something. Oh, these are all just like such a mess. Oof. I, I don't think that's what we want. No. Drawing. I don't want to draw, dog. This is interesting. It's a stormboard.
storm board helps your team capture, organize, discuss, this. prioritize, and act. The music stuff drives me crazy. I feel like I'm watching Blues Clues. A challenge, particularly for remote teams. And great ideas often take time to percolate. With Stormboard, everyone is an interactive, ongoing participant. Oh. Whenever and wherever inspiration strikes, collaborate in your own words before, during, or after the next meeting. Quickly add collaborative digital sticky notes, images, videos, sketches, and documents to your story. Then organize, comment, vote, or assign them to someone on your team to take care of. If you don't know where to start, we have hundreds of templates to help you structure your collaboration. Once you've got your great ideas in Stormboard, instead of taking a blurry photo of a whiteboard, you can instantly export to PDF, Word, PowerPoint, or Excel, and send the reports to your boss or coworkers, or live co-edit the document right inside Stormboard. Between meetings, your team can continuously act on and grow ideas. At your next meeting, everything is there for you to build off, rather than starting with a blank whiteboard. Meetings can actually get things done. Wow, you're the office hero. There is no software to install. It works in your browser on devices from... All right. They're kind of trying to do what I'm doing, but I don't like the product. I certainly don't like the video. Ooh. But here's a list of companies that are clearly interested in using better collaboration software. <laughs> Maybe we should do that. That's a good place to look for um, companies to uh, buy your stuff. Maybe. Um, but in essence, we would try to it's kind of mean. Notes, um, we would try to declare at the beginning of the meeting. There's a handful of colors, so a lot of times we would... We, we All right, would we got to go back and listen to what Becky was saying. Health monitor one, which is doing the past like, month or say. Um, we were doing using mural and doing... We, did, we just made a template on mural of what went well, what didn't, and what should we do next time. And people would uh, all have to sign in together on their own. So everyone had to bring their laptop. And then everyone, um, it was funny, one person doesn't actually have a laptop on the team. The part-time person who, yeah, she didn't, she only has a desktop. Oh, okay. So we had to find her a laptop so that this would work. <laughs> uh, she used her phone, but the mural phone interface was a little rough. Um, because you just, you want to see a lot more on your screen right. than, you, than you can on the phone. Um, but in essence, we would drag and drop sticky notes. Um, we would try to declare at the beginning of the meeting, there's a handful of colors. So a lot of times we would, we, we were messing around with different ways to say like, do like, well, one of the questions was do, You know what's one thing that sucks about interactive whiteboards? Remote whiteboards or virtual whiteboards? You can't use them on your phone, because your phone's only this big. Well, we have a solution. Maybe. I'm talking as if this is a product that somebody's purchased. Do I want to know who wrote which sticky or not? Mm. Some, there's a lot of value to that, then there's also some, like, not value. I don't, or it's not that there's not value, but some yeah. there's risks to that. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if you're using, like, an actual sticky in a room, and you're all using that same yellow one, you know, maybe you can tell the handwriting part, maybe you can't, but I think some people, like, not knowing yeah. who's sticky, but we, we didn't want that. We kind of wanted to know who was saying these things. Right. So we would try to pick a color. Like, okay, you do the green sticky today, you do the pink, and yellow, and orange. Yeah. Can't be how you spell that. But, um, yeah. Am I going to start telling you that? This is, you know, this is a mural. Okay, so yeah, you yeah. Have... If the people you're interviewing think that they're talking too much, that's a sign that you're doing a good interview because you're not talking, and that's good. So I feel good about that. Some people like anonymity. So, some people do want anonymity. Maybe they can always sign in as um, anonymous. You can always do that. But, um, it doesn't sound like it's a huge deal right now. I've been writing meetings through an online sort of tool that's a virtual tool that's bringing everybody together. Very interesting. Uh -huh. And it has a sticky note concept. Right. Which is similar to what I'm doing. Yes. But you describe it as a virtual whiteboard. That's, yes. Is that's that what they, I think that's what they call it in their branding yes. marketing stuff. So, so, in your so. you can put whatever you want wherever. It's like unstructured. Totally unstructured. Yeah. Um, and, people from Mural are watching this because I, the, one of the problems that we had with it there was our design guy kind of figured out how to to make it work for our needs and no one else could so everyone else was like ah I accidentally moved the whole board I don't know where I am anymore I can't zoom at the right level I don't know yeah. what happened I've been putting my things in the wrong place so he kind of figured out how to like you can lock a certain aspect ratio or lock certain boxes so that's he made this like template board of what went well what didn't and, and he made that almost like a stamp you know that you could stamp on this right. whiteboard and we did the same board over and over but no one else knows how to do that and we did one time we accidentally unlocked it and then it moved and, you know so it was yeah it was a little too um yeah, I mean, it met our needs of trying to get stickies on the plate, you know, and everyone could kind of have that free-for-all sticky moment, but um, it didn't have almost enough guardrails for us. I think we jumped in with no guardrails and then yeah. maybe even set up some things that didn't work for us because of that.
that's good to hear because that's kind of my hypothesis is that a little more structure would make those a lot more useful in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can imagine something where if, if Mural had Good sign, it, people. Mural had a template for this. That's good. I think Michael made the template. Maybe Mural had, I don't know, we could look and see later. But um, yeah, like, I would kind of want to have that template figured out so that I didn't I don't th put like, stickies off, off the grid and yeah, and have the zoom change, you know? I don't think templates are a good idea. I think a virtual whiteboard might be a bad idea, but yeah, well, maybe not. Exactly so. so what is that template like? Is it just like question box, question box? It's it's just a, there's a space for what went well and a space for what didn't go well, and then I think we added a third. They're all the same. All the templates are the same. It's just columns or a grid. That's all that you ever need, apparently, when you're doing sticky note stuff. Maybe grouping. That's it. A column for you know, let's. Um, so in essence, what we would so let's start with those first two columns. It was just the big columns, and then you have to drag over. You, in essence, you drag a sticky, there's stickies on the left, and you, you drag a square or a rectangle or a circle, the three sticky shapes to choose from. And then you start typing in it, and I think maybe once you get out of the sticky is when it's a bit visible to everyone else. Um, and then usually the people either grab another sticky or just copy that one and type in that one. So, so the stickies can land wherever, um, and so people were just kind of dragging in and typing, typing. So usually what we do is kind of say, okay, and that's part of the, like the Scrum Master Retro, whoever run the Retro can usually kind of sense when people are slowing down. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was a little harder to do in this world because I, would, you know, I, I didn't always know Just showing, this, the point of this is, just showing whether or not people are typing is the real question. The status that we were gonna, I was thinking originally doing was, are you paying attention or not? But really it's just, are you typing? If you're typing, then let's keep rolling. If not, move on. That's a good idea. We'll do that, we'll go, go through these and update these later. How might we visible to everybody else? This whole thing, Jonah mentioned this too with their virtual whiteboards. Problems with virtual wh whiteboards. First of all, they're super hard to use. You can't give a client a virtual whiteboard to add, give their feedback. It's a massive pain in the ass, especially on a mobile device, which is mo what devices most people have. Another thing is that when you're typing your sticky, you have to do it live. You don't get any private moment. You can't share the sticky. It's just happening in real time. So you have to use this virtual space to manage privacy. It doesn't really work that way. Another thing is, is that people who are running the meeting can't see what's going on, unlike a real whiteboard. So we're solving all that. These might be the biggest issues since we're literally asking them. What were the problems? She's telling us. If we can solve these issues, we might be able to make a virtual whiteboard that actually works. Or are you typing in the sticky or not? Um, but usually you kind of have to use your spidey senses to know when, when the ideas have stopped flowing and people are starting to you know, look at their phones and things. Yeah. Um, but then there is some sort of feature in Mural, and again, only our design guys the Jedi mind master of these, of this tool right now to kind of maybe you know lasso them all and then align them so they turn into a, more of a grid yeah. than just wherever. Um, but then you have to unlasso them because what then oftentimes what we do in our records after that is um, we look for themes. We start organizing them. We right. you know we kind of read through and oh you wrote that too. So for a while. Um, There was actually a couple different things that would happen. Sometimes, because you're, most people are typing and they're not quite reading. People don't, how do I say this? People with a lot of like, thoughts and opinions and ideas are typing, 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 typing for a while, getting all their stuff out, and then they start reading everyone else's. Sometimes your more introspective people are not writing anything down and, and watching everything else read for a while, and then they come in at the end. Um, sorry to typecast and buffy, but yeah. so there's, there's a couple different ways that people watch that happen. So one thing I noticed is that some people would end up writing the same sticky, right? Um, writing those thoughts in the same sticky, which definitely happens if you're doing it with actual sticky notes, right? Um, but then with, with the mural board, what I saw happening sometimes is somebody would read, you know, say my sticky, and instead of adding another sticky, mural also has icons, because I think it, yeah, so it's got some like clip art. So somebody found a thumbs up clip art, you know, thumbs down clip art or things like, and so people would start dragging clip art and just sticking it on that sticky, 
which usually meant I second that sticky. I'm not going to type it in myself. Right. Um, like I agree with that. So, it, but that it wasn't quite upvoting. In that case, they that they use that iconography to say ditto. Right. Right. Um, but then later, what we would do was um, we. We already have a feature that means that when you that makes it so that when you type in stuff, it doesn't present it until we're all ready to present. So it forces people to think for themselves and not just watch other people's stuff. This is a big deal. That's a big deal. these kind of group them in different themes thematically even if you said two different things oh they were both about database architecture so let's put those in groups on together and then um, and then we would kind of go through right now we've got such a small team we don't do a lot of formal upvoting it's more informal upvoting of just to say what which one of these guys should we tackle right now and we just kind of ask around if anyone has any real passions for one and then that's that third one of the board is when we would try to say okay well, what should we do about this and those we just dump as text boxes then yeah mm -hmm. So one of the things you're doing when you get the stickies in a kind of big pile is you're aligning them in grid or the designer is. You want a little organized and readable. Mm -hmm. And another thing you're doing is you're grouping them together. Right. And sometimes the groups have thematic theme, maybe even like a name. Like you would, do you think it would make sense to name one of those groups or is the top card usually good enough to start? Yeah, yeah, good question. I think it depends on the size of, you know, how the, the, the amount of cards that are coming through. Yeah. I like to name those groups, um, but sometimes we didn't necessarily codify that on the mural board. Um, I, I don't know good reason why necessarily. Yeah. Like I think I would like to. I would say out loud, okay, right. these all look like they're about database architecture. And that's just as far as it would go. Um, but yeah, definitely. The, honestly, the like the last one and lining them, that's just to help us read them, because then the first thing we do is move them and stack them and make them unreadable again. So I don't even know if that part is that helpful. I mean, we do it, so we must have liked doing it. What what are, what do those groups look like? Is it just are they just clumps or is there rows or columns or mm -hmm. do you We don't get that fancy, a lot of those clumps. Yeah. Because at that point Do we have stuff about grouping here already? Yeah, let's talk about this. Some ideas on here. I mean, um, click into a group, name a group. Can I do follow-up tasks? What did I? I can't. What is that? Um, What just happened? Um, I can see this happening where, like, you have a group of cards and then you click it. You get like a little modal thing that shows the group, maybe. I don't know. Solution space. Uh, what you're looking at, a lot of times the, the retrospective improvement is often, not always, but it's often related to the group as opposed to an individual item in the group. So at that point, it's okay to lose a little bit of that detail yeah. because what you really want to get out of it is like, okay, there's clearly, you know, this is a hot button topic, so yeah. let's dig into that. And sometimes it's, you know, the, the action item that we identified has nothing to do with those original cards. You know, like, yeah. it's just like when you're fighting with a significant other, and you know, like you thought it was about a dishwasher, but it was actually about how much they appreciate you and show affection or something, you know? So it's sometimes that kind of thing happens too. So that's why a lot of times the grouping, I mean, it's nice to see everything, um, but a lot of times the, um, yeah, that's what we only think Recontextualization, we're saying this is really about this, we all agree, yes, okay, uh -huh. so now that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when you have that second, that third tier, rather, that third, third group of things, mm -hmm. do you rewrite post-its, or do you just grab the best ones and put them over there? No, well, we, we neither. I guess we rewrite. We leave all that raw stuff, we kind of leave raw, and then we turn either make a new post-it or just like a text box that says, okay, so I what our, oh, hold on, let me make sure I understand the question. When we talk about the action items that are going to come out of that retro, like, yeah, what are we going to do about yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, that often is just a new statement. Because the retro is like, I didn't, like, database architecture process thump or something, right? right? Like, that's what the post-it note says. No, I'm bagging on database. Right? <laughs> that's that's, that's database my, my favorite thing. Um, and then, but then in the last column, it might say that oh, we need to have a um, every time we're going to do an architecture, you know, task or card, we should have a quick pre-flight meeting about it. Like that's what the 
the, 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 the thing that gets on a post yeah. is just this didn't go well. Right. Um, but the process, the, you know, the improvement of the process is very different wording about you know, what's our idea for how we're going to go better the next time. It's a different concept. It's totally different, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I'm just seeing what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have it all in videos. So okay. I don't feel like I, I, I'm gonna. You can, this is gonna be another video of me watching this video, watching taking all the notes, and I don't. Use this you know, video. I, like I imagine, if people watch these videos, they're gonna probably watch them on like one and a half speed. So right. then when they watch the like one and a half speed, <laughs> watch it, yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. What else? What have we got time? Thirty-five minutes. Okay. I would like ideally we can get to a usability test yeah. before we wrap it up with a whole small budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned people don't have laptops, but yeah. many people do have laptops in the meeting. It sounds like everybody but one has a laptop. And she, she's got one now. She has one now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do they have their phones? They do have their phones. And how do you feel about people using their phones in meetings? Oh, I feel like I'm not doing a good job with, I'm not a very good leader in that department. Ooh, sure. um, okay, so I, we're all people, we're all, like most of us in this group are parents, we got kids in elementary school, we're getting stressed throughout, we got stuff. So like I don't want to say like no phone, right? I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But anytime there's a phone, you know, within your hand, you, you're, you're, you just want to just pop it open, just yeah. see, oh my gosh, I got a notification, you know? And um, so I, I, but I haven't, I haven't talked to the team about this. So right now we all bring our phones. Um, personally, I would like to not have the phone be a thing that is grabbed, um, but, we, but we all do it and I haven't, I haven't said no to it. Um, I, I think the, you know, the, 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 at one point before that, uh, the one, um, the woman on the team had a laptop. She used her phone for mural, and she did a fine job of doing. You know, she would do mural and then turn it down. So I don't think I'm opposed to people needing using the mobile app for things as long as they have the discipline to say, "And I'm done with that portion where I can use the mobile app and I'm going to put it away." So I think it would just have to be in one of those kind of awkward conversations that you just have to have. That's just like, "Hey, I'm thinking that we're just going to use our phone for this and then and put right. it back in the pocket." Right. So. Do you feel comfortable having a conversation with the team now, or would that be like a hesitancy? I think I feel comfortable now, but it's goofy since I've been. You know, I've gosh, I'm with this team three four years now and we've never talked about it so it's like that weird thing like the longer you go like awkward you know <laughs> like, right yeah like i never knew that guy's name now i can't ask him because i've known him for four years right so uh, but i think it's fine we're really i mean yeah we're really good people. Like, like, look, i gotta watch like you know like i'm one of those people who's getting notifications in the middle of the meeting and awkwardly looking at my watch instead of your face so like i get it that's where we are and so yeah. we just have to people just have to kind of set around with these things out yeah. Well, it's cool. I mean, that was one of my biggest fears of this project, and I had designed some ideas about how to get around that. And in every conversation, I've asked people, and they all kind of said, "It's fine." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's you know, like I'm trying to think if it would be, I don't know. It's one of those things where maybe there's like a blog post once or a little note once in your app. Or yeah. I don't know. It's called solution bucketing. I'm giving you solutions yeah, that might not exist, but like you know, maybe it's some kind of reminder at the beginning that says, "Talk about the ground rules for how you're going to use your phone yeah. after this," or something like that. That might be a nice no, conversation a starter for people that like yeah, to just kind of say, "Hey, this is a new way of doing things, so you might use that ground rules for it." Yeah. We just did 40 minutes in problem space. Oh, perfect. So we can get it all kinds of stuff. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, let's, um, can I pull the curtains quick? You sure can. We have a lighter. See if you can go right here now. Those curtains both look, smell, and sound like they're from the early 80s, and that's because they are. Such a bad idea. Wait, wait. Oh, it's okay. Oh, my God. Can you, will you maybe sit here with us? Why did I? It got me. You got me. Yeah, I'll just edit this. We'll maybe take a break. Oh, okay. You know what? Let's take a break. <clears throat> Shoot. There's a usability test coming up. We got a lot of good stuff coming still. How much time do we have left on Becky's? We got 20 minutes left. It'll take us 15 at one and a half speed or something. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll get back to this shortly. Hey y'all, back at it. We're gonna watch Becky's usability test now. Uh, let's dive in. Oh, how dare you? Okay, good. This is also because maybe. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's like a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, the back of the camera, also, I'll just say that we want you to talk, think aloud, mm -hmm. and I want to ask you a bunch of questions. Um, or a friend told you. Okay, oh, okay, here we go. Okay, so somebody told me there's a spray tool to help you with these. I will say, awesome. Cool. What would you tell me? Here's a link. Okay, I'll check it out. Here we go. Okay, shuffleboard. Good shuffleboard. Go to dashboard. What's my dashboard? Okay, sorry, I will, yeah. So I think I, as, as I'm thinking aloud through this, I'm like, what is my dashboard? I haven't done anything yet. Why do I have a dashboard to go to? That's a bugger. I have to look oh, out for you. Yeah. Sorry, it's okay. Um, run a meeting live meeting. So little superhero gal, okay. Shuffleboard put brainstorms. I don't know how to Okay, I like that. Um, so let's pause here. What do you think yeah. about this so far? Run amazing live meetings. I think that um, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when I see brainstorms, I, I, I started thinking about, like, is this just for certain types of sessions? Like, I often don't think of my retro as a brainstorm. Yeah. It probably is, but I wouldn't think of it that way. Um, but I also have lots of, you know, I, I didn't talk much about the, the product hat that I wear, but when we're doing, you know, product design stuff with the, I was me and the UX um, designer often together in a room, throwing things on the wall and stuff, you know, that I just what I think is a brainstorm. So, That's a really good point. Um, but, uh, 
Yeah, so I bet I still would be like the amazing. We can't call it brainstorms. Seem like meetings is what it's No way. Because that's what I have to do a lot of. Um, I think the other part of that though, so for me, um, in my role right now, I have a lot of meetings within just the University of Michigan, and I have a lot of meetings that I have for, at, with other collaborators at other institutions, like other academic institutions. And then what we often think of as live meetings are our face to face meetings. So like twice mm -hmm. a year, we go to the same place together. Yeah. And um, so I think. Uh, I, I, that's another one that I'm starting to wonder. What is that? What does a live meeting mean here? Is it yeah. some sort of way to help me when everyone's in a room together? Or yeah, no, yeah. Well, this is a really important copy for me. I, I kind of know I don't like it, but I don't know what I want to be instead. Mm -hmm. Those are really new, interesting. I, that's really useful. If you had to write this for me, based on what you know about software, so far. It's cheating. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the solution space. Do my work right. Me. I'm wondering. I don't know if this is too like um, buzzword bingo, but like collaborate in real time. Uh, type so of thing live. feels yeah, like the real time collaboration feels better than live. Yeah. And if it's collaborate, then I then I kind of know better than that it's um yeah that it's. I guess that's maybe a different word than yeah. the, it's almost the brainstorm word that yeah. I understand. It's a variety of different real time things I can do with somebody. You have the great answer. That's okay. very useful. All right. I like it. I have to copy of those. Into your long yeah. list of ideas. Yeah. All right. So join William is okay. Real quick. Yeah. William's the first thing you thought of when you heard about Shuffleboard. And I guess maybe that's something you've heard already from videos potentially. But Oh, like the name yeah. brand Shuffleboard. Um, I thought of the, the name <laughs> Shuffleboard for sure, which I love. people say, oh, um, Italians. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have actually, well, she's a young Italian, but a friend of mine had, uh, she grew up in Detroit, and her, she, at her family home, they had a shuffleboard court in the backyard. What? Yes, so I uh, played shuffleboard with old Italians before in, in Detroit. But, My Italian had a board of bocce. <laughs> so, um, but board, I mean, like, I, any play on word board makes sense to me. That's okay. board, like, I'm using, um, you know, I'm using Trello boards, I'm using Jira boards, I'm using whiteboards. Like, cool. so that to me already, like, I didn't immediately think, oh, weird, he's sending me a sports link. Okay. You know, <laughs> I thought, oh, right, boards, shuffle boards. And so I guess the shuffle part of it, I often, you know, I mean, I think about, both the physical shuffling of items on boards and then yeah. the second secondary shuffling of boards like oh crap which like it's the retrospective board where is that yeah. like I, is that, do i pull it up in google doc and where's the notes from that and i, I do a lot of shuffling of the boards, boards themselves in, in, in addition to the items on a board so i'm not considering that so i like that too okay cool okay all right so all right so okay cool. uh, all right a video a video with sam oh, no, <laughs> right there Okay, um, I like having a video. I, I like if it's, let's see how long this video is. Can I see how long oh, it is? Let me just check that out. Oh, I had to play it. Okay, pause it. Oh, 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 listen Three minutes feels a little long for me. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, something like that, I'll probably start watching the first, I'll give you about 15 seconds max. And I probably also want there to be some closed captioning in case I don't want to bother getting oh, some audio yeah, on there. Yeah. Um, and if I get, if, if I like what I'm seeing, I'll keep watching. But if it's just like, oh, this is just like marketing nerve, I don't want, I don't care. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck this is. So this video's got to catch me early. And if it's going to be three minutes, it better be worth my time, you know? Would you watch? Can, would you watch it now, or would you scroll to the bottom and do something else first? Um, well, now that I saw it three minutes, I would probably keep going before I went to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if it was quick enough, if it, yeah, if it's like sub thirty seconds, then I usually give it. I hit it anyway. But okay. if it's if it's more than thirty seconds, I'm gonna I might question it. So cool. Um, yeah. So, but I, okay, but I do want to say that I really, really do. There's a moment, an inflection moment, when I do want to see like a video. Yeah. It's yeah. just so much easier sometimes for me. So and there's I, two. Yeah, yeah. So, well, wait, so what did you? Think? Maybe there'll be two videos. Right, right, or yeah. We do something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. yeah, something after I'm in, or I don't know. Yeah, or that gets sent to me later. I don't know. Take the pressure off your collaborative workshop. So there's collaborative workshop. Yeah. Um, take the pressure off of them. So I don't know. Okay, so I guess I better read these to figure out what pressure I'm in. Well, I didn't realize I was do it first. Mm -hmm. No. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I will say, because we no longer, I'll tell you what is annoying. I carry my backpack everywhere now, and in that backpack are always sharpies and a bunch of post-its because mm -hmm. you never know when it's yeah. a meeting like this will strike. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like depending on what the workshop is, some of these are a lot of pressure to just like bring all that yeah. supplies, and then like, oh crap, everyone's like. Somehow you have to magically be ready before everyone else is, you know, and, and but like, um, so yeah. that's some of the pressure I feel about the, but like, I don't know, for me, I don't feel a lot of pressure. This is part, this is a yeah. thing I do, um, but like, if it were some instead of take the pressure off wording that's more just like make it simple make it easy make it clean make it yeah. make it quick those types of things um, but i don't know if you know other people might feel pressure maybe it's just because i'm yeah um, so used to these so i think it's such, I, I think that maybe that came from people who are feeling more pressure about and that's why i'm talking to you because your role is somebody who is all tends to be at the center of these yeah you're yeah. running it all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so run engaging collaborative meetings capture feedback with simple guided prompts that people answer on there Okay, real quick. She is mentioning the pain of carrying around post-its and Sharpies. This is a thing. We've seen this a couple places. This is, the post-it Sharpie thing is a pain in the ass. If it was just there and ready to go, that'd be so much nicer. So something like, you know, um, instant, instant meetings. Just throw it up instantly. No, no, no mess. Um, to do. Welcome video once signed up.
Um, well, at first I was thinking, sorry, I keep pointing at the screen, but, um, the run engaging collaborative meetings and the capture feedback part didn't seem to be to, oh, like yeah, related. Totally. Um, and then as soon as I saw, oh, they're going to answer these things on their phones, I thought, hmm, interesting, mm. we've never seen that before. But yeah. I see what you were asking me about that earlier. So I'm intrigued. Uh, Slightly skeptical, but intrigued. Okay. Uh, right? yeah, that's <laughs> so the best part of paper and markers without the hassle. See that? Like, that speaks to me. Yeah, right? Catch cool. lots of small ideas quickly and arrange them in real time, just like on a whiteboard. You love that. That me. Yeah, cool. Designed to enhance real time in person discussion, not to replace that. That is really awesome too for, for me. That's cool. Me. Very cool. Never lose a good idea. No more taking pictures of whiteboards. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Right? That is exactly. Mike, you like that. Hey, that is right yeah. up my alley. And make sure everyone's heard. Shuffleboard works great for remote teams, too. It says I'm keep everyone's focus where it should be in the meeting. Okay, okay. Um, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I think when I read that, first, I when, when I see for remote teams, too, I'm like, oh, is it not supposed to be for remote teams? Is it replacing mm. in-person teams? Because, you know, right above there, it talked about in-person, but I guess I never yeah. processed until reading this copy about, um, is it is it most is it aimed at one audience over the other? Um, or is it aimed at the audience that's a combo, right, which is yeah. what I deal with. So that you know, that would be helpful. Is keeping this whole should be in the meeting. Now that's really cool because mm. those poor people that are remote, I mean, it just sucks for them. And they're trying. And the other thing is when you can see them, they've got like you know, you know that their camera is like the screen that they're supposed to be watching is here, but you see them over here because they're on their other screen. Um, you know, camera people that are remote, I mean, it just sucks for them. That would be helpful. Is keeping this whole should be in the meeting. Now that's really cool because mm. those poor people that are remote, I mean, it just sucks for them. And they're trying. And the other thing is when you can see them, they've got like you know, you know that their camera is like the screen that they're supposed to be watching is here, but you see them over here because they're on their other screen. Um, you know that their focus yeah. is not in the meeting. So so that's that's interesting to me that okay. I can. Okay, ooh, yeah, serious. Oh, I know that. He's shining, he's making these videos. Okay. Let me ask you that. Yeah. Is it interesting to you? Would it be interesting to you seeing this that this was a transparent company where you could like where this was being built live? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think it would be an interesting thing. Um, I don't think I want it on the homepage. I just don't care. It, it, it seems, yeah, like self-aggrandizing. Yeah. You know, I can't pronounce that. Self-aggrandizing? Yeah. Yeah. Is that even the right word? I don't know. Yeah, but I'm just like, okay, I don't care. I just want you to help me with this thing. Yeah. Totally. That has a lot more emphasis in, like, the color and the buttons. That's more emphasis in the person kind of board. Right. That we're important to me. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if... Listen. Um, imagine if I hadn't asked somebody I trust about this and just left this same thing up there and I was just, like, acting like... A self aggrand I mean, this is a, ironic considering I'm just a person in a, room, in a room talking to a YouTube video, but like, oh, I'm so glad I asked that question. If this is, you know, designed for startups uh, who are, like, if that, if your target audience is a bunch of startups who are trying to run stuff, they might feel differently. I'm yeah. old fashioned. Come on. What she's saying is, for a different audience, it might work, which is a nice way to say, no, but don't necessarily trust me, but no, I don't care. Oh, That's so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will find out. Okay. All right. Now, what would you like me to do now? What would you do? Well, in this case, I'm not sure if I should put the dashboard or join the waitlist, but it sounds like that might be a bug. Um, yeah, it, it would right. normally say here, uh, sign up for create a conference or log in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would, okay, here's one uh, one beef of mine. Um, yes. It's not beef, but uh, I I get a little annoyed when the first thing I have to do is create an account to get to do anything. Mm -hmm. I would much rather have something that says, like, try, try one. And, yeah. um, you know, I, like, you always, eventually you need to get their email address, right? You need yeah. to get an account. I get that. Um, so it's like, I, even though I get annoyed anytime I have to give anyone my email address, and I have a special email address just for those email addresses, we right. all do now. Um, but I do like it, and I don't know if everyone sees this, but I like it when it's like, try it. And then I try it and get a little hooked, and then all of a sudden when I want to do something like save it or share it, then it's like, yeah. oh, do that, you know, log yeah. in. And then, because then I'm a little like, well, okay, I like it, it's worth it. Then, yeah. then I'm willing to decide, if, you know, at that point. So, so I, yeah, but if there was a sign up or whatever, I, I guess I would have to. So, just to see what I want to see. Would you, based off what you've... And this is interesting. Probably people want to get your email address as soon as possible. Um, because then they can send you emails bothering you about it. But if you don't like it, then those emails aren't going to matter much anyway. I think the main reason people don't do this is that it's just kind of technically a little hard. But is it that hard? I don't know. I want you to have a great onboarding experience. Get them in there. You know, you should do the thing that, like, help your customers, you know, <laughs> do them a favor. You're here to serve them. If that's what they want, give it to them. 
done so far, would you watch that? Um, we'll see if I actually do it. I, yeah, well, I mean, at, at this point, I probably have to watch that video this time. Would you watch the video? Mm -hmm. I think so. Based on I'm this curious. copy, yeah, I'd want to see. I'd want to see at least what it is. Yeah. Would you watch a little bit and see if it's um, marketing BS or yes. this one? Right, right. And I mean, of course, it's got to have some marketing BS. But what right. I wanted to say is, this is what it looks like. This is how people use it. Yeah. Here and here, it is being used. I don't want just like cartoon characters don't saying, "Oh, I hate, I hate Darth Maul, whiteboard." You know, like I don't want that. But I want so like I don't mind seeing yeah. the people in the video, or even if there's not a real person's face, like show me the app. Give me some sense of the app. But you can have, you can have yeah. marketing hanging around there. As much as I hate to hear my own voice, would you, if you would watch it, would you watch a little few minutes, like a minute now and see what sure. you think? Yeah. I mean, let's go play now and see what I want to hear what you think. Pause anytime you have a thought. Okay, okay. I'm okay. saying I'm in Shuffleboard and I just want to show you what it's like to run a meeting in Shuffleboard today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a meeting. I, I like that you cut right to the chase. Thank you. Good, mm -hmm. good. As a facilitator, just go to getshuffleboard.com. And I'm just going to click start meeting from one of our pre existing templates or maybe a template that you've already set up. You can name our meeting, I have this week's sprint retro. I don't need to see that. You can big show that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the when Julia Child like so I'm gonna put this in the open and then like flash to and here it is you know like I don't need to see your meeting for it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna just show the best of our meeting. So maybe you're connected. I'm really uh, showing my persona, right? Of fun or something that you said. <laughs> yeah, you're good at we're making yeah. it happen. It's useful. There's a wall. You can cast it to a TV and everything. The point is that everybody's gonna see what's happening in your meeting as you run. You want to this link here? This is the share. Yep, it's too much room. That's so funny because I thought I was going fast. Yeah, no, I don't need any of that. Like, yeah. this is okay to, what do they call it, Big Show? To, to cut and say, like, yeah, you start a meeting and then um, right. I don't need like to see all of these pieces. Because, like, it's yeah. okay. I'm going to have to step through those pieces and I'm going to figure that out. But, you know, yeah, I think, I guess I want, sorry, I'll not have everybody talking on layers there, but, like, I want to know, like, yeah, you start meetings and then people are emailed the thing or whatever. I don't know how they get the thing, right. but, you know, like, the link, people get links and then you can go or something. You know, yeah. like that's, and this is, and here's more. Hey, everybody, another good day for Shuffleboard. What? I'm excited today. Uh, we're building a startup live on YouTube. Then you can just show some movement of the thing, thing right. but not having yeah. everybody talking on layers. I'm gonna have to step through those pieces and I'm gonna figure it out. But you know, yeah, I think I guess I want. Sorry, I'll not have yeah. everybody talking on layers there. But like, I want to know, like, yeah, you start meetings, then people are emailed the thing or whatever. I don't know how they get the thing, right. but you know, like the link, people get links, and then you can go or something. You know, yeah. that's and this and here's one, and then you know, kind of just watch. I'm like design editing a video in my head right now, yeah. but you know, like then you can go and then you can just show some movement of things. I don't know how they move or if they appear or what happens, but um, yeah, okay, yeah, this cool. Is, yeah, I don't need. Now this is a this is a thing that maybe I would watch later. If I'm like, oh, I can't get started. Like in a help, I would bury this in like right, help docs right. area um, to get me started. No, because I still don't quite know what is it going to look like. What am I going to? How is this going to answer all of those things? Right? How is this picking away paper and pencil for me? How is this um, sharing the thing? The things I really were passionate about, especially were those two. Right? Like capture ideas quickly in real time and then and share them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, 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 it sounds like this video's job is to answer what is this thing right. real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 If, if it's right there on that front page, like that. Yeah. yeah totally. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how are we doing? 457. Okay. So we should probably wrap. Yep. That means next time we will uh, yeah, we actually have you log in and maybe try to run a meeting together. Absolutely. I'm sorry to talk so much. We knew this was going to happen. This is the whole point of the meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is actually perfect. Well, we, knew, we knew that I was, we were coming to talk. That's actually that. how I measure whether or not it's a good meeting. Okay. Because if I yeah. talk the whole time, then what, what are we doing this morning? Right, right. right. Points, right. Points. Mm -hmm. Well, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much for helping me out. A lot of very dense. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's tough if you don't have the context of the, of the entire project to know. Like you probably could just saying stuff where I'm like hearing it connected to that, so the people like mm -hmm. they said that too, or oh that's different. I never thought of that. Yeah, so yeah. much good stuff. Awesome. You can watch the video where I watch this meeting and take all the notes. Oh, I was saying. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, I'm happy to do an actual test of the app whenever you want. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate. It. I will. I'll probably try to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> I, mean, I have no point we'll to call do. Call me and tell you fix this thing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I meant to say. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Sam. All right. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. Goodbye, audience. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is all zero. Good problem. So we're actually in the room here, and Becky's going to show me the mural tool that you mentioned and the thing that we just did. Yeah, so what I'm going to try and show you is this was the mural board where we started copying in, and then you can tell where we stopped using uh, this as a retrospective format. But so you'll already get to see how bad I am at, like... Oh, this um, is a, what, a this giant is board a itself. This is a giant board, but then within the board, we have these... Ah, uh, see, I can't get the right resolution to show you. I think oh, if I click on this, maybe it'll, like, yeah, hit to the right place. Okay. So, hey, we did pretty well this time. We had a lot in the web. Oh, well, awesome. yeah, a lot of times people like to put things on the line, too. Things that were, like, really uh, bad parts about it. Oh, uh, that's really tough for... That is interesting. So you can see these are some people using those icons, just, like, plus one items. And then I think... I don't know what the check marks were. I don't remember those. Um, so here you can kind of see how we grouped some, in, you know... Ross left and returned, so he must have went on vacation or something. So two different people wrote about that, but we grouped them together, right? And here were our actions out of it. Um, let's keep going, find another one. Oh, somebody used black. That was fun. Oh, but like Zach Machine is dying. Got a got a skull. This got bombs, and you know, so yeah, they, like cool. I, they were having fun with that. But um, yeah, so we were having fun with iconography. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what it That's meant. Cool. Docker. <laughs> yeah, we got a little outside the lines. Yeah, another one. Another thing we started doing was we added something we called Kvetching Corner. Um. This is an artifact, this is really cool. Seeing artifacts from somebody else's um, actual creations, like if this is how
and they have some pictures they drew on there. So Drew, I'm gonna say post-its and columns, and then pictures and fun stuff. People wanna have fun when they're having meetings, yeah? Like they wanna have fun, we wanna have a good time. People draw like a funny weird face, that's cool. Maybe we could have a Giphy plugin or something. You could have reactions, you could have all kinds of stuff. Um, because sometimes the, when you're doing a retro, what you want to come out of the retro are things that you can actually make some improvement on, whether right. it's, you know, like, and sometimes people just needed to say, that really sucked, that they never done, yeah. really sucked. But then when we'd say, okay, well, what do you want to do about it? There, was, there wasn't yeah. anything to be done. So we started adding a Covetti corner section so that we could um, at least still voice those frustrations. Yeah. But when it, when, Ended abruptly. Well, she also showed me um, um, what was it? It was a Trello board. I'm gonna have to re upload that. That sucks. Um, did not think that was gonna happen. All right, um, that's not bad though. Let's get this stuff into Asana, anything that's relevant, and then we'll uh, try to wrap up for the day, probably. This video is pretty long. All right, we did that, we did that. We're gonna do this later, and we're gonna do this right now. Well, we're gonna do this move, make tasks. Talk about Menlo. These will be useful if we ever need to figure out like what kind of meetings people don't need to run with this stuff. This is less like tasks to do and more like validation and helping me think about who I'm going to um, market this to and how I'm going to market it to them and what their pain points are. What went over time is really interesting. be happy if That's a good one. You know what's not? It's 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 um participants can also see
Let's get weird. Oops. Name groups. Good idea. Shorter intro video. Um,
Okay. Uh, help documentation is interesting. Let's talk about that. What kind of support tickets do we have right now? Like one. Chat widget for support. Support articles. Let's prioritize this backlog and wrap for today. We got some great notes here today. You know, really sunk in on these two interviews. We really thought about them a lot. And we've got a good backlog, and I think we're gonna be able to build a great marketing landing page that talks about the benefits of this thing much better soon, maybe even tomorrow. Um, okay, so I'm gonna wrap that up. Wrap that up, wrap that up. This will be tomorrow. So much good stuff here to do. I know it might not sound like or feel like we did a lot today, but just watching these, taking notes, interacting with these conversations, especially this early on, I think is just like pretty cool. I think it actually is really important and it might feel a little slow and like nothing happened, but something did happen today. We're really figuring, we're, we are honing our marketing messaging is really what the main thing, the product itself a little bit, but we are honing this marketing messaging to be super focused on who these people are and what their problems are and that's a big deal. Okay, let's go into our backlog and just take a little peruse through and see uh, how we're doing in general. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Update, this is ready to go for sure. Shorter intro video, maybe. Let users run meetings without signing up. Oh, that's gonna be a little later. launch stuff. I'm not sure this is super relevant. I don't know if that makes sense to have a launch section. We'll worry about it later. This is a big one. report to be useful to do together. Can we do this already? Uh, this is not, I hate this. Oh, did I have the notifications? Is there something I need to know? Hey, people like my post with all. That's cool. That's nice of them. This can go way down the list, honestly. This was rough. We gotta fix this sooner than later.
This is getting bumped up. This ordering is, seems like a pretty big deal. It's all going into the same related set of things here. Look, right, where is it? Right here. How do I select one more? I don't like that. I made this so hard. I think what I meant. What the hell was that? Did I just write this and not put the hell I mean? Oh man, I guess it's late, guys. in our competitor's bed. What is storage on board? I forget. We already have this. Intense. Wait, what is it? Uh, seems like a lot. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Okay. Hold up.
That's like a... Okay, it's like a highly, it's not either of these things. It's, um, it's like a product planning whiteboard. Structured whiteboards, maybe? Was there another one that was kind of like that? I forget. I think that's our differentiator here. I'm, I'm kind of figuring that out. kind of accidentally created um, my competitive analysis today. That's kind of cool. This is going to go way higher. I don't really know that the order of the rest of these makes sense yet. We have to figure out the order based off more feedback. I think we've got a lot of ideas, but I'm not really sure what we should do order-wise. So. We'll just have to figure that out next, I think. Um, observe a real meeting, see what's missing. It's getting kind of long. I don't like that. Maybe we should delete some of the ones at the bottom that we don't like. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to update our homepage messaging. We're going to take the most valuable feedback we got from these uh, interviews and we're going to figure out, does our homepage and the way we're talking about our product make sense to people? Do the benefits we're proposing that we can provide, that we think we can provide, are those things that people actually want? And can we make this something that people are excited to sign up for? And then iterate as we build excitement. Um, we do not have a compelling landing page right now. Um, and we. 
have a good stab at it and we've used it to get feedback but I think there's a much much better version so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna see how that flies with people and then I'm gonna go back to the product and uh, make sure that we can get this over the line to the point where a couple of these people are gonna buy if we can't get to that um, if we can't get to some purchases soon then this uh, project might run out of steam you know we have to get it to the point where we're getting some money in not to like fund the project because it will be pretty minimal amount of money but just to make sure that like this is something that a market wants all right guys i think that's it for today cool see you later